Good evening. Happy Saturday. Nice to see everyone. It's it's had some some good scrolling of chat so far. So that always <laughs> you guys makes have me been happy. real active in there. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna have to take some sips while I go through here. Uh, Whiskey Nature wants to make sure everyone saw he was first yesterday at 8 11 p.m so he was nice and early in chat i feel like he was live at that time but somehow he was commenting on this video yep so we're drinking a bourbon hurricane making up cocktails put in the chat what you guys are drinking <laughs> dave vogel sings here piper john um they had a good conversation there. <laughs> you must have Dave, been the only Dave two Piper. for a while. <laughs> Whiskey Nature came back. He wasn't just here yesterday. He's here tonight, too. Jeff Castle's here. Um, Rebecca Boyle. Cheers. cheers. And very talkative people tonight. Miles Bourbon Traveler. Cheers to you. Bourbon Syndicate. Only four more days, five more days. You're doing great. Way to go. That's a... A good long amount of time. Gandy Road, cheers. I like bourbon a lot. Jeff Castle, Sugar Kitty, Mark Gale. Cheers. It is the wild man from Denver tonight. I don't he's, even know what that means. He's talking about that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> yes, yes, that is correct. <laughs> wild man. <laughs> Uh, who else we got? The bourbon pour. The bourbon pour. Cheers. Your name is a different color. I'm going to have to get you a wrench. PP. And guitar, whiskey, and golf. I don't, I don't have your different color also. I'll have to get you a wrench. Um, let's see. Canadian Chris. Cheers, eh? And scrolling. Taking a sip. <laughs> Some whiskey wisdom whiskey wisdom look at that he had a it's a great, sighting <laughs> a great uh preview was that it what's is that the word it, it, it was a like a commercial teaser trailer <laughs> teaser trailer that's what trailer uh for his live stream on the 19th got me kind of amped up it was yeah turn was... the music up loud when you're watching it it's a good one um let's see bloody 81 cheers and I feel like we got to be getting close. These are Story the names time. I'm used to seeing. You are stealing my job here. Sorry. Story time. I'll look away. Cheers, Shane. Don't, don't hit me. <laughs> and I just get excited when I see people on there. I don't think I said this one. GT Mustang 09. Cheers. Did you say Peter White? I don't think so. Peter White, cheers. Look at that. You're doing, maybe I need good, you to help me with my job. Good thing I'm here to do your job. <laughs> Big Cat, 253. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Whiskey Cove's here, too. <laughs> Surprise. Um, what was it? Did I miss one? Jabber Jaws, you say that? Jabber Jaws. No, I didn't. And I should have. It was very easy to see with it being a different color of text. Oh, my goodness. Cheers to you. Bourbon Hall, Cheers. And I made it to the end. Now it's your turn. Trip. Yeah. So welcome, everybody. Some new names in there that we've not seen before. Some we haven't seen in a while. Welcome to the show. Um, we like to start off all of these shows by saying hi to everybody in chat. And then we get right into business. And we'll do like a minute of housekeeping. And then we're going to bring out a very special guest y'all been waiting for. Uh, tonight, we've got two free giveaways. These are uh, four two-ounce samples flight of, from our personal collection. Later in the show, Laura's going to give a buzzword, and you just put that buzzword in the chat. After we've collected some names for a while, we'll have a drawing. We'll give these away. Let me put these behind the curtain, get them out of the way. Hey, look at that. Super chat. Thanks, Rusty. Didn't we've, even leave a comment. We've also... You're fine. Speaking of, <laughs> she pushes a button and everything goes dark and I panic every time. <laughs> We've also got an elevated flight tonight. This is a four two ounce sample flight of Hardens Creek. There's the Jacobs Well. There is the Claremont, the Frankfurt, and the Boston. So all hyper aged stuff in here. I think the Jacobs Well is like 15 and a half years. The other three are all 17 years. Jim Beam. Uh, $5 Super Chats will get you entered for that. Also, 
people with five dollar super chats. I, I I had some more of the milk carton mat stickers made, and I've got about eighteen more of the large sized trash pallet stickers. Um, if you want both, when you super chat, email us and say you want both. Otherwise, you're going to get the milk carton mat um, until those are gone and then the trash pallet. $5 super chats will get you both stickers if you want and an entry into the elevated flight. Let me get those out of the way. Now we got space. We got space now. So. Uh, patron live tasting, quarterly live tasting is coming up. Uh, everybody that is at the enthusiast tier and above is automatically going to September. get the flight. $15. $15. And <laughs> then we normally draw one person from the, the sipper level, the $5 level. I think we're going to draw three this time. We want a, we want a healthy crowd. Um, if you've not joined our Patreon and you've been on the fence or thinking about it and you want to get involved in that patron live tasting, uh, now's the time to do it. We're probably going to be doing that next month in May, early May. And uh, we, we get you in for the, the entry and we'll get the samples on their way to you. We'll do the live tasting and have a great time. We've also got some new stickers coming out. Um, watch our video on Monday. There's a preview of the two new stickers in there, and they'll they'll be available I'm to our, our patrons first, and then after that we can do some <laughs> via the live stream. So without further ado, you guys all came for for the guest, the not guest, for us. <laughs> not for us. <laughs> Let's bring him out. This is hey, hey, good evening, evening, folks. How y'all doing? Dove. Welcome, Patrick. I am indeed, yeah. <laughs> Thanks Great. for having How me. Are you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. I think just as we yeah, push, it, pushed me onto the channel, a little bit of lag here. So I think uh, we have to work with that a, a little bit. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's our end. It looks like our... we. It seems to go bad right when we go live, but suddenly <laughs> our internet stops working. It's the great time on, on Saturday nights, so... It just yeah, we're actually having some uh, of we're, internet. Yeah, we're having some pretty bad uh, weather here in Colorado, like really high winds. Like so, there's a bunch of power outages all around the, the the front range. So, if I go black, then you'll know why. Maybe a tree's falling through my house, so you know, <laughs> down power line outside. One of all those fun things that can happen. We'll, we'll send a wellness check your way. Hopefully it's not in the cold that the tree hits. <laughs> Hopefully not, right? <laughs> no, it's not. So but yeah, what are you uh, drinking tonight? tonight? Yeah, I am drinking. So I've been really, I don't, if people have been watching the channel quite a lot. I've been digging Doc Swinson's quite a lot lately. Uh, they source a lot of their own stuff. Uh, from my MGP Kentucky and also Tennessee Dickel. Uh, I haven't tried any of the Dickel blends, but uh, some of the finishing and blending is, is phenomenal. Kind of is a little bit reminiscent of like where High West like were like seven, eight years ago when they were just starting out using a lot of MGB stuff. So I'm drinking the Doc Swinson's, um, the triple cask. So this is finished in uh, sherry and cognac casks. Uh, they also do like a high proof version of this, but this is just the, the regular uh, 48% version. Really, really good though. Can't recommend this stuff enough. <clears throat> yeah, nice, nice sipper there. So mm -hmm, definitely. I start off every one of these the same. Um, why don't you take a minute and, and tell everyone in the chat a little bit about yourself, uh, how you came about uh, starting a whiskey channel? Yeah, I definitely can do that. Uh, it's a really great question to ask as well. Uh, so as you can tell by the accent, you know, born and bred from Texas, you know, lived on a ranch out there for a few years. Of course, no, I'm not from Texas. I'm from the UK. <laughs> so yeah, I'm originally from Wales in the UK. Uh, I moved to the States about 10, 12 years ago. Um, but I, I always drunk, I, I always drunk whiskey and bourbon in the UK, specifically bourbon. I always liked bourbon in the UK. But growing up, uh, this all you could get was like Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels is probably not technically bourbon, but those are the only two you could get. So I've, I've always had a pretty deep affinity to Jim Beam. Uh, and then when I came to the States and there was hundreds of different bourbons, that kind of just blew, uh, blew my love of whiskey to a higher level. 
because um, I remember trying Buffalo Trace for the first time. Like that was the first whiskey I tried after Jim Beam when I came to the States. And, and it just blew my mind how good bourbon can be. And then ever since then, it's kind of just been traveling along on that journey and just trying different things. And then I had a little bit of free time on my hands. I kind of always wanted to do make something on YouTube, I felt like. Uh, I do like a lot of sports as well. So I had a I was maybe going to go that direction, but I just kept loving whiskey so much. And I was building so much community here in Colorado and meeting people through whiskey. It was just, it just became like an organic thing to do, which is really great. Uh, and long may that continue constantly, you know, I'm meeting new people and they share the same affinity like you folks tonight, you know, you've invited me on your channel. I appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. Uh, you know, we all have this common love or there's something that we like and it just brings people together in a really positive way. And also like when you see like the give backs and the raffles and stuff that can benefit different organizations or whatnot, it, that, can, that epitomizes the bourbon community in my aspect. But uh, I started the Whiskey Call, I think it was July of uh, 22. If I So around about 18, 19 months. I don't know what it is. I'm terrible with math. Uh, but about 18, 19 months ago. And it's been pretty good. So we've, I think we've done like two videos a week since the day I started. And it was Tuesday, Friday, every day, um, mainly reviews. And then uh, some other stuff as well. Where like I go to like stores, uh, blind tier lists and stuff. Like people seem to really like when I go to a store. Uh, I did the Arizona trip, and I'm, I know I'm going off topic a little bit here, but I did an Arizona trip, and like we hit up at through different Costco's, and people seem to really like that style of video, so we, I, I do a little bit of that as well, and that's really fun to do. But my bread and butter, all I really love to do is just whiskey reviews. So I just like trying whiskey for the first time and sharing that experience with people on YouTube, and if they can get something out of that, great. If they can't, then I'm okay with that too. <laughs> and I know that was a long-winded answer, but hopefully you can get something from it. Okay, you actually touched on a couple of other questions that I have written down here. Um, you know, I can just jump right to those, I guess. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely. Recently, yeah, you recently interviewed the master blender from Doc Swinson's. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a really, yeah. really neat guy. I've seen him on a couple other channels as well, and I always enjoy listening to him talk. He's he's very enthusiastic and energetic about. Uh, blending whiskey and doc swinson's in particular and while you, when you i didn't see the patreon version which was like the full interview i saw what you put on your youtube channel where you tasted through several doc swinson's um yep. which which one of those would you say is your favorite yeah so just kind of speaking about the experience with jesse uh you can this access you can, it's the video the full interview that's like 15 minutes long is over on the patreon but anybody can view it it's like free to view uh but uh yeah first time meeting jesse uh, we talked a little bit about through email and i wanted to do a doc swinson's video and i was like heck uh you know i'll just reach out to doc swinson's and see if they wanted someone to kind of just like a member of staff there maybe someone on the bottle in line to like hang out in a video for a few minutes and then a couple of days later, the master blender's blowing me up on email saying that he's perfectly fine. We want to jump in on there, which is really cool and speaks to kind of his character and volumes of it, of who he is. And then even after the video had finished, we just talked. We hung out for like 15, 20 minutes. I felt really bad because he seems like a really busy person. But we just talked a little bit about life, uh, you know, a little bit about Washington, the area up there, kind of like the ethos of the company and what they're all about, like the work-life balance, family bonds and stuff like that. But he seems to be... Uh, really interested in like with flavors in general some of his uh some of the people who he looks up to when he was younger was like anthony bourdain and gordon ramsay so like really vibrant palettes and like combining all of that and taking that into whiskey and doing some really unique stuff doc swinson's are like they have a one coming out soon i think this month uh it's finished on it's a rye finished on rum and then tawny port and i don't think i've ever heard of a whiskey that's finished on rye and then tawny port which is quite a ballsy thing to do if you ask me but i, I could see how it could work you have like the, some of the jammy flavors, uh, some like the uh, the strawberries from uh, from like the Tony Port and like the black currants and stuff, and then the sweetness of the rum uh, to balance out the rice. So I think that would be really good. Uh, my favorite one is got has to be uh, this over here. It is. It's the um, it's the bourbon finished in Amburana barrels. So a lot of people have been doing uh, rye finished in Amburana. That seems to be quite a popular one to go to. I have a, a cigar blend that's finished in Amburana as well, but they did bourbon. And this is so, so good. It even has like this 
Tater label because it was a single oh, barrel. I love that. It's <laughs> Doc Swinson's Toast Crunch. Uh, and it's, it's every now and again, you get a whiskey. And I said this in the video when I did the taste through. You, you find a whiskey, you taste the whiskey. And it's so different to kind of anything else that you've tasted before. It kind of changes your like perception and idea of what whiskey can be. And, and this bottle can, kind of did that for me. And this was only uh, a month or two ago when I first tried it. It, it. It's it's so, sometimes people struggle to pick out flavors with whiskey, especially when they're getting into whiskey. But this is so obvious, like a cinnamon, a cinnamon toast crunch with like coconut milk poured over it. Is, Absolutely delicious. I can't speak highly enough about it. A phenomenal ball, about seventy dollars, fifty-seven percent ABV as well. So it's you know up, up there in strength, and it, and it's just good. I, I, like I said, I can't say enough good things about it. If you if you want to find it, I think it's the you can still. You, it doesn't have to be the single barrel. They still do the Bossa Nova and um, Burana one, and they also said that they were going to bring out a, a, a Bossa Nova rye. I think Jesse was saying that they were going to bring out soon, which is going to be super interesting to wow. see that, which would be nice. Because uh, I think he, it, it was a rye that he wanted to do finished on rum and then Amburana uh, because uh, Amburana needs a little bit of sweetness. So like the Penelope Rio, for an example, that they finished that with honey and Amburana just to add a little bit of sweetness. I, I haven't tried that bottle, but I hear very good things about it. And I feel like that if you work with Amburana, you generally need like a little bit of a sweeter aspect with it. Um, but yeah, definitely. If you maybe I need to send you a sample because it is it is that good. It should be really great to see uh, you guys try it for the first time because allocation and distribution isn't great yet. I think they're in like thirty one states, is what he was saying. Uh, but I'm sure that I'm sure I'm sure that you know, you'll see them in every state soon. They're a smaller production as well, actually, uh, and they're a uh, contract distiller is what they were originally. Like they make like gin, vodkas, and rums for other people. That's how they started. And then as just like a, a fun side project, uh, they just had like dabbled in some whiskey stuff and it turned out to be really good. So they were like, heck, you know, we need to probably do this uh, a little bit more. And so that's where the Doxinson's lineup came from. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know if you're aware, we, we're from Washington State. They're about four hours north of us yeah they're, they're they're a bit away yeah they're a bit away but their their products are pretty readily available here we've, mm. we've got quite a few on the shelf the one that i'm looking for that unfortunately isn't as widely available around us is their session blend have you tried that one yet uh if i don't have it uh, the the session bourbon right i think that's what it is no yes. i i didn't get that I chose to get the uh, the blender's cut instead. It was a, I was going to choose one or the other. I ended up going with the blender's cut, just because the blender's cut is like the basis for everything that they do. It's the it's the two mash bills blended from MGP, which they finish in the Bossa Nova. They do everything with it. So I think that that was the one I wanted to get like a, a good taste. But yeah, they're right up by the Canadian border, I think, right? Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A common theme that you hear from. A lot of whiskey tube channels in the past few months is uh, there's probably nobody out there blending MGP better than Doc Swenson's right now. So I agree. If, if you love MGP, okay. check them out because it's fantastic, fantastic stuff. Yeah. And they also have, uh, there's a 12 year Madeira bouncing around somewhere. One of my subscribers reached out to me and asked me if I went to the, I'm still trying to cope. Still trying to coax that off him, uh, but it's it's twelve. It's dickle. It is. It's a one hundred percent dickle, and then it's finished a Madeira barrel. So be, if anybody can do something good with dickle, I'm sure it will be them. So I would love to see what that tastes like and see if they were able to how they were able to blend that. Because even small amounts of dickle, like uh, a good example is the Discovery batch five, uh, batch five or six, when they started and add, adding Tennessee. Uh, whiskey into their blends, it, it just became so noticeable. I, I, I don't knock on Dick, I don't mind their stuff. You know, I have a lot of some of their stuff, like this 15 year single barrel, which is great. I have a Blue Note 17, which is Dickle juice. Uh, but for whatever reason, in a blend, it, 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 something happens, uh, it consumes the whiskey, you know, uh, it, it makes it a little bit more one dimensional, more Tennessee. And even if you put like a small amount in, like the Discovery batches, like it's just weird, it's strange, yeah. So you you got a comment here, uh, Matt. Whiskey Wisdom says Troy needs to start a pheromone cologne of Amberana at this point, <laughs> since you're so in love with the Amberana. I, I do like the Amberanas. Uh, a little goes a long way. Though. And uh, Mark, yeah, is I have. Drinking out of this Cove Glen Karen tonight. Hey, there's a man right there. 
I appreciate that. <laughs> so I have uh, so I have this cigar blend, the one I touched upon earlier on. So uh, it's it's from a, a distillery here in Colorado called Copper Sky. I don't know if you've heard of them before. It's um, uh, oh, they, yeah. again they source they, they source MGP a lot. Uh, this is uh, distilled in Indiana, so it's 100% MGP stuff. 64.2% uh, ABV, and it's the, it's finished in uh, so it's finished on Amburana after it's a rye whiskey finished on Amburana after fin being finished on I think like uh, Oloroso, and I, this is probably the best cigar finished or blended whiskey I've ever had. And that's why this bottle is unopened because I drank my last one and I'm just sitting on this. They do very similar stuff to Copper Sky in terms of the release. Like they'll do one one release and then it's gone. You, you know, it's not going to be like a little blend that stays around forever. I think they brought back a second batch, but it's nowhere near as good as this first batch. But really, really great whiskey and shows a lot what you can do with Amburana. Yeah, I, I think we've got one Copper Sky, and it's a Madeira finish, which is really sweet. Mm -hmm. pro probably my favorite finish, but that one is, like, overly sweet. So, again, a little oh, goes a long mm -hmm. way. Yeah, definitely. I haven't uh, I haven't got that one. I haven't tried that one. But I know that they did, um, they did a pick with a local... A local Facebook group here, Colorado Bourbon Community. I think it was called like the Red Lady Lady, where they took two empty barrels of uh, whiskey that they were previously finished in. One was an apple brandy barrel that they finished whiskey in, and another one was a Madeira barrel that they finished whiskey in. And then they uh, and then they put whiskey in both of them, and then blended that at the end, and then they bottled it. Phenomenal stuff. I think that was uh, probably the best thing I've drunk from them. I think it's called Pink Pink Lady. I, I think that's what it was called, but it was really, really, really good. But, uh, Copper Sky. I think they might be distilling a little bit of their own stuff right now, but it's all uh, it's all, it's all sourced. I think they also source from Alberta. I want to say for a lot of their older stuff. So um, I think they've knocked out like a twenty like a twenty year old Canadian not so long ago. But you know, blending and sourcing is all part of being a distillery, especially you know when you're a little younger. You know, you need to pay the bills, need to be able to put out good stuff. And, you know, was fortunate enough for distilleries that they have access to places like MGP, which just, have just changed the landscape of bourbon and whiskey that, that we know today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. So many good brands because of those. Yeah, so <clears throat> a couple months ago, you had a, a pretty impressive milestone on your channel. Uh, 5,000 subscribers. You, you had your first live stream. We uh we watched yeah. a little bit of that. You gave away a bunch of whiskey. I did. Um, mm -hmm. Any plans to to continue doing live streams in the future? So uh, the live stream didn't go. Uh, it started a little rocky just because I programmed it into uh, Streamlabs, and then I had like every all the slides lined up ready to make a pretty dope live stream, uh, and it just didn't populate through YouTube. So then I just had to just hard stream into YouTube. So now uh, I'm getting more experience with uh, stream Streamyard. Uh, I think that's the direction I'll probably go, uh, and it, I think so. I think so, live streaming is something that I want to include into the channel. Uh, I think it's just more of like a time thing for me right now. Uh, it, it's it's like I don't even have time to watch really any other YouTube whiskey content anymore like I used to, and I, and I love to. I just don't have the time in my schedule. I have two young kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old. It's, it's like almost all-consuming. You might even hear them tonight if you hear any banging and stuff like that. that, that that'll be them, you know, some <laughs> screaming as well. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, I, I think we'll do another one maybe. So I think what I want to do is I'll do a 10... 10k hopefully if i hit 10,000 subscribers i'll do a 10k subscriber live stream but what i want to do is i want to do live stream collaborations with other people i think i have uh, one that i might be doing with that uh, that bourbon dude and then i'm also working with nathan over at everyday drinker we're going to do like a collaboration on a video uh like a blind video we'll post one on my video and we'll post the second part on his or vice versa so i think it's just more of like the collaborative thing is what i want to be doing for live streams right now so this kind of you came at a good time. <laughs> well, well, we were honored to to get you on the show. We were real, real happy you said yes. Yeah, I mean, pleasure's all mine. Don't know, but we we started working on this a, a couple months ago, and uh, you know, just to get your schedule to where to where it needed to be to to have the time to do this. We would we push it out like two and a half, almost three months, right? 
Yeah, I think that was. Uh, but it worked perfectly for me because I was in uh, I was in uh, Arizona, I think, at the time when you messaged. Like for like two, three weeks in January, I was in I was in Arizona quite a lot. And then when I came back, I just had to throw myself back into work because I took so much time off. So uh, this was perfect, you know, uh, perfect timing. <clears throat> Yeah. So speak, speaking of that Arizona trip, you did a series of Costco hunts. Yes. Um, <laughs> so you, you found a couple bottles on, on that trip. What, what was your favorite experience and what was your favorite bottle? Yeah. So the, the Costco videos that I, I do, I've done quite, you know, a decent amount of them. I just, A, I just like going to Costco in general. Uh, and then B, the wife likes to go into Costco as well. So when I'm doing my whiskey thing, she, she can, you know, go and hang out and do check some clothes or some other, other stuff going on in Costco. So everybody's a winner with that. And Costco does a really great job of when they get whiskey in it, it's more, more or less always as cheap as you're going to find anywhere. And then it's really interesting to see what different Costco's do in terms of different whiskeys. Because Costco's like to get single barrel picks in. Uh, whoever's in charge of the whiskey program at Costco does a pretty good job at uh, you know bringing in decent single barrels. None of them are like super overly rare. California actually seems to get a lot of decent single barrels, like Eagle Rare single barrel I've seen, uh, and, and like Taylor single barrel picks that I've seen. Not really, we don't really get that in Colorado. I don't think they have the buy-in power yet, uh, because in Colorado, I'll, I'm digress. I'll digress and move back into the Arizona stuff. But in Colorado specifically, um, there was laws against grocery stores from selling hard liquor. So for years and years and years, they used to, the only thing you could sell was 3.2 percent beer, and then in only in the last like five to ten years, that's slowly been changing. So then, uh, like. The Costco's don't have this great history of working with big uh, distributors in Colorado, so I don't think they have the pollen power. So then when we go to other states like New Mexico, we go to Arizona, I always like to stop into the Costco's and, and just see what they have, you know. Uh, Utah is a shame that they don't sell any uh, hard liquor in, in the Utah Costco's, which is a shame because they have some of the biggest in the world. They have the biggest Costco in the world, but uh, the New Mexico one was good. The Phoenix ones were good. I think we saw uh, there was a Knob Creek single barrel pick for thirty nine ninety nine, which is insane like uh, for 120 proof i think it was like I, I have to go back and watch a video i think it was like 10 11 year old uh knob creek pick for like 40 bucks which is which is mental uh, and then also heaven hill sevens in every costco and then actually i did a video like a week or two before i left were whiskeys that i missed out on in 2023 and one of the whiskeys was knob creek 18 uh and the first costco that we went that on the second day of the trip one Knob Creek 18 was sitting on the shelf. So I just went in. As soon as I, I'll scope out a little bit before I do my videos. And I saw that, so I grabbed it, just put it in my cart straight away. I was like, I'm not waiting to go around doing the videos first. So we grabbed that. Uh, and the Knob Creek 18 was definitely the best pickup. I've, um, and then in, uh, and in Nevada, on my way back, uh, we stopped in a Costco and they had a well of fall proof uh, Nevada pick as well, which is pretty solid. And I, I picked that up as well. I haven't cracked it yet. Uh, but it's that that sort of level of picks is what they generally have. They have good single barrel picks from like Knob Creek. Seem to be a, quite a popular one. And then stuff like you'll see some full uh, 1792 every so often as well. And if, I think it's a good way because I always share a lot of what I you know, I do store pick, I do store hauls on the channel. And then sometimes when I reel off some of the prices for some stuff. It, for a lot of people around the U.S., some of those prices are a little bit uh, unbelievable because they might be a little lower. So what I like to do is going into Costco's. I like to film the video showing the prices and just kind of showing people that I'm stopping at these different places around the country and you're still able to find, okay, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be your Sazerac stuff for the most part. It's not going to be uh, the top shelf stuff. It's not going to be Pappies and stuff like that. But you can still find 1792 full proofs, Knob Creek 80, Knob Creek Picks, Heaven Hill 7 for really cheap money, you know. I think you, it's just so going out there and just looking and Costco is a great place to start. And I also have the first time... Uh, Coming up, I have I need to edit it, but I, but I filmed the other day of the first time actually going to a Sam's Club and doing kind of what I do in a Costco at a Sam's Club to see uh, you know more whiskey they have. Uh, what I found is actually they're even cheaper than uh, Costco for the most part, which is I didn't think you could get cheaper than that, but yeah, pretty insane. So uh, 
near us, they're building another Costco, like within a half hour of us. So we get to save like 15 minutes on our commute to Costco when we go. But we've seen a lot of the times with their grand openings, they bring in a whole bunch of like nice bottles. So we're gonna we're planning on fighting the crowd to see if we can come out <laughs> with something good. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that too. I've seen pictures of people posting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was one in Colorado, the Grand Open, open over by the airport, but I don't think they had really anything good. Uh, and I guess I feel like now where I'm at with the whiskey cove and the whiskey that I have, I, I'm kind of not really hunting in in the sense that I'm not like consistently going to like stores at different times and lining up anymore. I just I don't I don't I enjoy that anymore. Uh, and I, I'm fortunate enough that through the years, and we're talking even like a long time before YouTube, of just spending thousands of dollars at these liquor stores that have pretty decent relationships. And Colorado is a little different to other states, and I'm not saying that Colorado is the only state. But again, going back to some of those um, archaic whiskey or liquor laws that uh, you could only, or one person could only own two liquor stores. You could only get two liquor store licenses. So what you found was that uh, it, it created like big, big liquor stores, like quite big uh, buildings with you know a lot of whiskey. And it was only owned by like uh, one different person. It was like a family place here, a family place there, but they were really big. So stuff like Argonaut is family owned in Denver and it's Denver's biggest liquor store. You have Dave Co, which is family owned as well. And they have two stores and a couple of other different ones. Uh, so it's not like you have to go to like Total Wines and like be in the crowd with Total Wine. You're able to get to know like these people at different stores and they get so much selection in as well. Like multiple times, these stores have like well of all proof single barrel picks, Taylor single barrel picks. I think there's been two well of all proof picks so far this year at, uh, at, at uh, Dave Co, which is insane. And they just had a Blanton's pick as well uh, and a stag pick, I think, not so long ago. So it's and, and, and if you build the relationships as well, it seems to you know put me in a decent spot, which is fortunate uh, that I'm able to get that. Uh, but uh, the, I definitely hear, hear you when you said the grand opening seemed to be where it at because, like I said, I see pictures and stuff like that all the time on Facebook about people hitting up uh, Costco's and whatnot. And Washington, I think, actually do, do they get pretty decent uh, whiskey in their Costco's because I think I see many times people posting pictures. And you, know, you guys have a funky uh, state tax thing going on there, right, which is quite, quite high on liquor. We, we, we do. Yeah, it is like very high. 20, 21% plus a bottle charge. And they also, I think, tax the distributor. So they're already usually priced a little higher on the shelf before the tax that we see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, a lot of tax. So around the holidays, the Costco had a little better selection. I mean, they had some like McKenna tenures and, and stuff like that in there. Mm -hmm. We've not seen anything super fancy, though, in, in our local Costco's. But I've seen people post <clears throat> yeah. on Facebook from our local Costco that they got some good they, stuff. But I think those people probably go there a whole lot more often than we do. Yeah, we, we just go like once every couple months or something. So it's not much of a hunt. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't like being in the big crowds. So uh, we don't mm -hmm. we don't go to Costco a ton, but we will fight the crowds for the grand opening coming up. Yeah, you, you know, and uh, you don't have to. You, there's ways of getting around buying liquor at Costco's without being a member. You know, if you know someone that's a member, just get them to buy you a gift card, give them some money, and you can go and shop at Costco's with a gift card. So, if you live near a Costco that sells alcohol and you're someone who likes drinking good bourbon, then I would definitely swing by a couple of times a month and just see kind of what's hanging out, and see if you can get hold of the uh, the alcohol manager as well. Let's uh, see if you can talk to him and build a good relationship with him because you might be able to get some tip offs then. That would be my suggestion. That's the dark arts of whiskey collection right there. That that gift card, that's a good tip. <laughs> Someone mm -hmm. that's a member buy you, or give them money, they give you a gift card, you can go shop. Mm -hmm. So so I got another question for you, Patrick. I watched your, your video. You were at the uh, midwinter nights mm. winter night drams uh, release party at the high west distillery this last year and the video you kind of snuck away to give a quick review um so so did you actually sneak away or was that stayed you're asking some good questions tonight i appreciate that <laughs> uh it was yeah it was it was it was, it was definitely a sneak it away like it was on the down low yeah it definitely was it was a little scary you know when i'm 
trying to seek relief film is because when I'm looking at the camera every now and again, I'll look off to the left. If I hear something, I'll just naturally look off. Uh, so that's usually a good tell if I'm like, you know, trying to seek relief film. But yeah, it was actually close to the entrance. Uh, it was like, there's like this grassy area as you come down the stairs into the High West Distillery. And I just put my camera on a, on a stone and I was like, I just want to do a review of this because, you know, part of reviewing whiskey and being a YouTuber for reviewing whiskey, you kind of want to get out, get a new release review out as soon as you can because, you know, it might get more views, which is part and parcel of a lot of the stuff that we do. Uh, so, yeah, I just, that was a day before it was released because during the High West Midwinter Night Strand release party, you can buy two cases, you can buy 12 bottles uh, and then the next day it becomes it goes on general sale at the distillery so that was right i don't i think i must have did the first review on that because that was right at the party uh as soon as i got it as soon as you go in they give you a key you go to the guy you give the guy a key and then uh, you get your pour and then uh and then i did it with that pour straight away so it was like almost instantly of them put it out and also as well um one of the guys there we were just talking with a few of us uh I, I met up with some people who run the High West Enthusiast Facebook page, uh, which is like 2,000 people strong, really good page, Preston, uh, Patricia, shout out to those folks over there. I uh, met up with those folks. Uh, we hung out with some of the staff at High West, and in the end, they were just sucking. They were just giving us uh, giving us the new pours for the High West, which is fantastic. So you pay like 200 bucks, bucks you get access to like the, the banquet, which they had like so much good stuff. They had like lobster, crab legs, a caviar they had, like full, like uh, some steak and bunch of stuff, well worth the $200. And then you get one free pour. But like I said, in the end, I must have had way too much let's let, let's just say that and uh, it was it was all for free which is cool you got to speak to me to one of the uh, the blenders there who works there at high west as well which is pretty cool he asked for my feedback on it i was just like better better than 10 but not better than nine so but i think it was a, it, this year release was just okay it was, it was good you know it wasn't anything to like let me remember uh how good it was and it, <laughs> this is a really good segue to do another shameless pack uh, I, I, I'm putting out a new video really soon of let's make Pi West Mid Winter Night Stram great again. Uh, and it's me basically going to be finishing and building a blend of old High West stuff mixed in with some MGP stuff and then finishing that on a barrel that I have been, that, that I have that has been sitting some Tony Port in there as well. So uh, that'll, that'll be really interesting to see that if I can do any better. <laughs> or maybe I'll take some samples for the next release party and see if I can get some people to try it and do like a live reaction review. See if they can pick it out. Oh, that, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and, but yeah, it was a um, good night. Hopefully when they, oh, if they make it good again, they can uh, also, <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this, <laughs> they can also make it a little cheaper again. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, since they were taken over by a, a Camp Campari, I think it was, I can't remember who they were taken over, but, um, you know, these uh, corporate people Const with cl claws. Constellation? Yeah, Constellation, Constellation Brand, that's one. You know, Constellation, yeah, that's what it is. Smoke Wagon. Yeah, High West is Constellation now. Yeah, they own uh, Svenka Vodka, they own some other stuff as well. Uh, I think they actually own... Um, uh, uh, it's not i can't remember it's not important anyway but yeah since they took over a few years ago the price has just got almost doubled well it hasn't almost doubled it's, it was 125 dollars at the distillery but however because they jumped up a little bit liquor stores just seem to be like doubling in price like a consistent like i saw at uh total wine a couple of days after it was released this year and it was like 185 dollars which is mental like that's how you can get away with charging that so they kind of shot themselves in the foot by putting it up like 30 bucks because that entail then pushed up prices more than that nationwide and it's just it's just not worth 180 dollars sad to say you know yeah uh so we we picked up this year's uh midwinter i i think it was better than last year's but yeah. it was still not as good as some of the previous versions um I, th I think the better option this year was definitely the prisoner's share mm -hmm. oh yeah i love that bottle did you try the boo rye yeah from last year uh we we have not had the boo rye yet we we, we have, have a we have a sample of it and i actually have a co-worker that is in utah right now and uh she was gonna stop at a couple <clears throat> places and see if she couldn't find one and you know if she can, I'll mm -hmm. give her some money and she'll bring it back to me. I'm guessing yeah, so she lot... probably doesn't find it. <laughs> 
Yeah, so last year uh, you could go out to Utah. Like, say Boo Rai got released this time last year, you could still go out to Utah uh, towards the end of the year. Like when I was out there for the midway, the nice time release party, and, and it was sitting on shelves at different liquor stores. It it just wasn't. Uh, it was there wasn't really a secondary market that was causing it to sell out. But last year's Boo Rai, and I don't particularly like Boo Rai. I like my bourbons and rice, rice to be separate, even though you can play around with the mash bills, and it's technically a Boo Rai if you have like a high rye bourbon. Uh, but uh, it, it was phenomenal. Yeah, it was definitely the, my favorite release from High West since the Act Nine of Midwinter Nice Tram is really good. Can't recommend it enough. I haven't tried this year's, but yeah, it was really, really good. Mm-hmm. I have it here. Yeah. This guy up here. I, I had a. Yippee. No. We, we have Yippee Kaye too. Oh, yeah. We had a sample of the Yippee Kaye, and that one was fantastic. That's the vermouth finished, I believe. That was so good. I wish yeah. they still made vermouth, that bottle. But, sorry. So, actually, uh, uh, so a little bit of insider information. I was told at the High West Midwinter Nice Tram Release Party that they're planning on bringing it back. So watch that space, maybe. Oh, probably because there's so many people that are like, that one was so good, they need to bring it back. And mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely got that cult following. Yes, it definitely so, does, yeah. So we just, uh, oh, I don't know, a while back we switched from our, our cocktail to some, some bourbons. We started with the Buffalo Distilling uh, Bottled in Bond, and we got that sample from uh, Bourbon School. And now we're on the Legend Heritage 8-Year, and that's from uh, Matt over at Whiskey Wisdom. So we like to to drink through some samples that, that some of our subscribers and patrons send us while we're, while we're chatting with you. Are you still working on the same thing, or you, have you switched it? Yeah, so I'm still working on the same thing. I, I do have a couple of samples left over, but I generally like to, uh, when I have people send me samples, I like to, I have poker nights here. So I, we just, bust, I normally bust out the samples for everybody to have as well as myself when we just kind of talk a little bit about it. So the only samples I have available now is a gin from High West. I don't even know if it's released yet, but I had it. It was a sample of like gin that they were bringing out. Uh, and then also uh, Preston from the High West Midwinter Nice Dram group I was talking about earlier on, he has sent me a absinthe, a whiskey finishing absinthe, uh, which I have not tried. Oh. Uh, so that'll put some hairs in your chest, I'm sure. But uh, I don't know. Any recommendations of what yeah, I should try back then? very strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was uh, there was a... He was stating that there was a whiskey... I can't remember which company it was, but someone had done an absinthe finished bourbon and he really liked it i can't remember who it was but absinthe is uh is not my palate i drank too much sambuca in my younger days living in the uk and, and sambuca has a very similar palate to absinthe you kind of have that like anise like aniseed uh like mm-hmm. licorice mm-hmm. notes oh, you know sometimes where <laughs> I, I don't know, I, just talk drink, about respons- <laughs> drink responsibly folks but sometimes when you don't drink responsibly and it causes you to be sick that that sensation can like put, that sensation can stop you wanting to drink that whatever you made you sick uh, ever again and sambuca is definitely that up there i can never go back to that and also apple schnapps as well i can never drink apple schnapps i think there's just like a, a, a chemistry thing within your brain that causing that uh and i think uh, hazy ipas is another thing so yeah can't those three things i've been sick on so i can't drink them again <laughs> oh no <laughs> I, I think I've heard of, of one of the old High West double rye single barrels that was finished in absinthe. I might be wrong on that, though. <clears throat> There's some crazy finishes in those double ryes. You, you never know. What yeah. You get. Yeah, I have a bunch. Uh, I have a, four, a one that's finished in maple uh, syrup barrels for like four years. Uh, I wish it tasted more mapley, actually, because wow. it was interesting. Wow. It's been finished for four years, but you get more sweet but not like the charry uh maple goodness that is associated with maple uh, syrup which is interesting which is probably why they left it in it for four years just because the flavor wasn't coming out but still it's a rye as well so you have a little bit of spice to balance out the sweetness as well and i have one full ball that i haven't opened i'm just going to stash it because these um these whiskey picks are going away now these double rye picks you know like the old black the black labels yeah. so uh yeah. these guys so yeah, they, they they're getting rid of these. So these are like, so these are like the individual ones. So what they, they change they change in the program High West style. So they used to do like you could go to High West, so they could send you samples, and you could pick 
your individual barrel or whatever is finished. So now what they do, and they bring, they got rid of this, they're bringing these out. And instead of letting people pick their own single barrel, they're just going to bring out different releases. So they put out like a Sauvignon Blanc and all the rest one, and then they're going to send those releases to everybody instead. Uh, so there's not going to be like a true single barrel program. Yes, it'll still have like selected by XYZ store on it, but it's going to be more yeah, yeah. small yeah. batch as opposed to like the single barrel thing. And also as well, prices increased to like $65, dollars on these. So they definitely snuck that in as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Whenever we see those those single barrel double rise still sitting around, we we grab them because we we know they're gone. They're not coming back. Um, we've we've tried some of the new the cask strength, and uh, I think we have a cab sauv and a chardonnay finished in the new new ones, and we haven't opened the chardonnay yet. So I jury, hear it's good, but we haven't opened it jury, yet. Jury's still out. We really like those old double rise single barrels, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know those when I look at it. When I was getting into High West and when they were doing the single barrel, they were like $40. And there's still some really great value for money in, in whiskey in general because you can have uh, – what I like to talk about them with is like you can have one that's finished in a Malbec or Sauvignon Blanc, and you might have someone coming over your house so you're entertaining. They're not necessarily a whiskey drinker, but you know they like to have a glass of red wine every now and again or a glass of white wine. So it's a good, really good segue into like introducing them into whiskey through a flavor profile that they already recognize and like. So that's why I always like to collect these as well. Uh, and com like this compared to like a lot of other finished whiskey is so much affordable, like when it was like $40, $50. And if you can still find these for like 50 bucks, I think it's definitely worth uh, picking them up even now. I'm not sure about the new ones. Most of the new ones I've tried haven't been that great, if I'm completely honest. But I have a stash of these different ones that I'm going to be kind of bunkering down on for a while. And that's for sure. Yeah, we, we've got a, a Malbec double rye that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a Merlot. I think we got a rum. Mm -hmm. We got another one, too. I think we got we, I think we got like six of those that we've got stashed away. Yeah, so the rum ones are good. Laura though. just, yeah, Laura just put the, uh, the hashtag for the first giveaway into the chat. Hashtag Cove. Um, we'll, we'll we're collect, really creative here. <laughs> we'll, we'll collect those entries for a little bit, and then we'll we'll do a drawing for the first giveaway. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, so, it's, a, it's a good hashtag. It's a good hashtag. Yeah. So you said you're originally from Wales, correct? Sorry, I'm just gonna meander around as I'm trying to pick out a whiskey here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So or, orig Go ahead. You uh you have quite the collection of Pendarin on the shelf there behind you. Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if I'm still coming through okay on the channel. Yep. Uh, right. This is actually quite high here. I, I, I'm a tall guy. I'm like 6'4". So when I'm standing here, it actually looks like it's not that big. But when I go back here, it's, it's actually the shelves are quite high up. Uh, but yeah, I have a bunch of these like specialty releases ones back here. These two, the red and the green ones, are more of like the... Uh, uh, the everyday one, so to speak. And then there's a bunch of these icons of whales is what they call. They started at one. I think they're at like 11 right now. Uh, and then I also have one which I've had on a video of like some of the rarest and uh, most special bottles that I've had before. And uh, this was on the list. So this is a Welsh whiskey. This is a 15-year-old Welsh whiskey that's finished in ex buffalo trace bourbon barrels and this is bottle number 76 of 114 so uh, and a very special bottle 59 percent abv and just fantastic you know if you're someone who's trying to get obviously i'm not going to recommend this because you're not going to find it but pendaren does a great job at uh, bringing on some of those quintessential bourbon notes you're not going to get the spice the over sweetness that you get with bourbon but you do get like the hints of vanilla uh, a little bit of like hint of barrel char characteristic there as well and with this one the 15 years it, it's just absorbed so much more of that flavor and it's really really good and i think they bottled every at a really good proof as well so cheers and thanks for reminding me to add this <laughs> yeah we, we've got a couple pendarons on the shelf i think we've got uh I don't remember. We I, one of them's not even open. Yeah, it's just been sitting there. We haven't gotten to it. Yeah, Laura, when Laura first started Baker Drinks, she used to do a World Whiskey Wednesday, and uh, she, we picked up uh, the first Pendarin, which we really, really liked, and so we grabbed another one for a diff 
for an episode and then she did away with that series and it's behind some other bottles and we kind of forgot about it it's been back there collecting dust for like two years yeah thanks so for reminding well, we me need now to, I gotta... we need to pull that out and... <laughs> yeah i think we have that... uh do we have the madeira is there a madeira finish uh there, they look the like the ones in, it, in the middle of your selection, your collection there, where you can see the bottle. Yeah, right. It's just the top. Right there. Yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. We have two well, different you know ones what, that look like that. Well, you know what they say? There's definitely no day like the present. So if you want to bust open and crack that bad boy open now, you know, it'll be interesting to get some first initial reactions. No pressure. I, I should go grab them. You should. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll, I'll let Laura in I, I, for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I, your format is, and I don't mean to like change anything up, but like do no, it if you want. No, we are we kind of we kind of go uh, with well, the flow. It's whatever whatever happens is what happens. But uh, I'm yeah, gonna say definitely. hi to some chat because there's been some few people that have popped in that I, I haven't said hi to. So Jen Clifton, thank you for helping with the sound because you know I can only hear one side of it, so it's hard for me to balance with the who's loud and who's not. Um, and Mike Brock, thanks. Thanks for being here. Matt Compton, you're a new name. It's nice to see you in chat. Uh, Bourbon Schools, cheers. Uh, Timber Cruise, I saw Bourbon Baller Lee earlier. Um, who else? Let's see. But I see there's a lot of people entering the giveaway, so that's awesome. We've got 26 entries. There's 48 people watching, so there's a few people that probably, you know, free entries all you got to do is type hashtag cove and you can get entered to win four random samples two ounce samples eight ounces of whiskey for nothing but hanging out with us and type in one comment so please do that so um patrick your your pindarin that you're drinking can you tell that it's finished in bourbon do you get more of that bourbon note from it yeah, definitely. Uh, there's so much more of a <clears throat> like a, a woody characteristic that uh, Welsh whiskey generally doesn't have, uh, like that vanilla and aged wood, and it's it's almost like a little tanniny as well in a way. But it has some of the fundamentals of uh, of so Pendarin, which, like, like pe 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 which is like like which is like like a pear drop, uh, fresh cut apples, and uh, like some lighter vanillas, and it's it's really good. It's phenomenal. That sounds, I mean, those notes sound really good. Oh my gosh, there's so much dust on those bottles. <laughs> They've been hidden. They've been hidden. I, I had to move a bunch to get to them. Oh, so the Madeira one's the one we haven't opened and we had the sherry wood. Okay. Yeah, I so respect I'm going to pour the sherry wood first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have the sherry wood, actually. Oh no, that is a lie. I do have the sherry wood. It's right behind me. <laughs> Yeah, I, we saw quite a few people talking about uh, Pendarin in a very, it was like a short window of time. There were several channels that were talking about how good it is and Welsh whiskey and all this. And so we saw them in a store and I had no idea what one to pick. And so I just asked the guy, I'm like, do you know anything about these? Which one would you suggest? And so I, I think he suggested the Sherry Wood. That's how I ended up with it, but... Yeah, I would say that the only real uh, macro distillery in Wales is Pendarin because Pend uh, Welsh whiskey went away and what didn't really exist for so much, so such a long time. I would say it's similar to something like uh, an Irish, uh, and maybe um, than anything else in terms of kind of more of like a floral fruity notes without uh, too much heat or spice because it most of the time it's kind of sits at like 40 to 45 ABV uh, that sherry what I, I don't I don't remember what that tastes like but I've also shamefully never done a Pandaren review on the channel I don't know why I haven't done it I just feel like I've probably done so much bourbon and rye stuff that there might not necessarily be a, a need for it or call for it uh, but it's also great to talk about it during a live stream, which is definitely what I did during my last live stream. <laughs> I really, really thought I was a sponsor for Pandaren, which I'm not. But if Pandaren are listening and they want to reach out, then I will listen. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, Barrel and Grain is asking, what is the best Welsh whiskey? Do you have uh, an opinion of what's the best? I think that, uh, I think, like I said, you know, Pandaren is only the real, like, macro distillery. I think a lot of 
everything outside of that is more like craft almost, uh, like smaller distillery. So definitely go the Pandaren route. Um, and that's something that you're going to find. I, I haven't seen any other Welsh whiskey in the US apart from Pandaren. Uh, they release like new releases of like icons of Wales once a year. So definitely look out for that. There is a, there's a collaboration that they just did with a distillery out of Patagonia in Argentina. So I'm going to hit you with a little bit of Welsh culture and knowledge. Not that you're asking for it, but you're going to get it anyway. Uh, Patagonia has one of the biggest Welsh expat communities <laughs> outside of Wales. Uh, they have uh, a bunch of, it's the second biggest Welsh speaking place uh, in the world uh, because a lot of people from Wales settled there a few hundred years ago. So then Pandaren being a Welsh distillery and that connection, uh, they did a, a collaboration uh, and that came out in Wales at the beginning of, la uh, at, the be at the end of last year, we, we might just get to seeing it uh, really soon here in the US. It comes in like this really awesome crate looking case as well, like, like a case that would put Bocas to shame, really, really cool. And I just a really unique uh, collaboration with people like literally the other side of the world, which is really fun. So back to the answer from Bar a question from Barrel and Grain, I would start with the red or green leg uh, legacy and Celt. Uh, if you're someone who likes more like raisins, dates, the like the darker sweeter notes, go for the gray one. The gray one. Uh, I don't have it. Uh, I have a bunch, but these two. So it's the ones with the dragons on the front, and they also do a gray one with a dragon on the front. So those three will give you a really great impression of what Welsh whiskey is. Um, and then you can, from there, if you still like it, you can go off and try to pick up some like the limited stuff here, which can run a little bit pricey, but if you get a 15 year old age statement, then it's probably worth it. <laughs> Opening up that box. We don't even usually keep things in boxes, so it's know, been on the right? shelf for a while. <laughs> quite, quite dusty. Like I said, it's been sitting back there two years. So non-chill filtered, no color added. Yeah. That's a big thing quite, in uh, quite dusty. That's a big thing in Scotch. Forty-six <laughs> percent. With like the color added stuff, that's a really big thing in uh, Welsh whiskey, Irish whiskey, and Scotch because um, it, it can happen. People add flavors and colorants, and uh, so they feel the need to put that on the bottle, as opposed to that's not something really that people put on bourbon bottles or rye bottles. Yeah, because some uh, we've had we have some Scotch that has. Uh, <laughs> some color added to it uh, i think the dalmore dalmore adds color so it looks dark like a bourbon more but uh yeah. that's just because they have coloring in it um yeah so you're, you're exactly much right lighter, more like an irish yeah. whiskey mm -hmm. yeah then that's what drove yeah, it so the american market is what drove the coloring added to it because they wanted something that was more recognizable to whiskey that they've already had because if you have like an isle of sky like a true isle of sky scotch it's actually really light. It's almost like uh, it almost looks like someone has uh, poured like half a glass of whiskey and then added ha another half of water to it. It looks almost like diluted. Uh, definitely doesn't know it's diluted. I can yeah, promise you that. We have but... a we we have a one of the art bags we tried. I mean, it was almost clear. We poured it in the glass and it was like, wait, is this my water glass or is this my whiskey glass? I can't tell because it's so clear. You get it up near your nose, there's no mistake in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Heated Scotch uh, is uh, is part of my favorite cocktail, which is the uh, penicillin. Really and uh, I, lo I love Peated Scotch. Mm -hmm. I have one of my closest friends out here in Colorado he just drinks scotch so anytime we get together or go and play golf he brings a bottle of scotch I bring bourbon and then when the bottle of scotch is gone he will shamefully drink some of my bourbon then so uh, but it's always a good time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're a golfer then too that's exciting e we e also enjoy e golf. even more reason to like you <laughs> there you so go yeah you know ago, our I... cocktail oh go ahead uh, that, no, I, well, I was just going to say that, you know, I think there's enjoying golf and playing golf and then there's just trying to play golf. I feel like I'm more in like the uh, the drinking and then trying to play golf stage right now, but I'm having, I'm going to get lessons to try and get a little bit better so I don't lose as many balls. So even though I'll be paying like 60 to to $100 for a lesson, it'll be an investment over time. It's going to be my attitude. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell my wife. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So uh, a couple of weeks ago, our cocktail of the night was the penicillin, but we did a bourbon penicillin. It was pretty good. 
Mm. Did you float anything on top of? Uh, mm. No, we didn't. Well, what we did, did that? You just make it with so, uh, the the oven inside, and then the gin, uh, like ginger syrup or like some lemon juice and some sugar and whatnot. Yeah, and then we had the like candied ginger as our garnish, and it was it was a little sweet, I think, because of the bourbon. I think the peated scotch would probably make it better, but we were just kind of wanting to stick with bourbon that night. <clears throat> We've been making our cocktails with just bourbon to start our our night. We we did a bourbon hurricane tonight. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> trying out all the, everything with bourbon instead of what it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, and like the penicillin cocktail is so fantastic. Uh, like you put like a blended scotch traditionally. You, you do whatever you want. You know, drink what you like, how you like it. Uh, and uh, but, so if you want to put bourbon in there, put bourbon in. I'm sure it'll taste just as good. But traditionally, and of course, I'm sure you all know this. This it's scotch blended scotch. And then what they do, they'll mm. get like a bar spoon at the end of the cocktail and kind of just flow something like an art bag or a lafroy on top so that first taste i always tell people to have a good you know a throwback quite a bit so then you get like a lot of that peatiness the blend is cautious inside the ginger syrup and the lemon juice and it's my go-to drink if i have a, a cold not that i'm drinking that much uh when i have a cold but if i'm if i want something to kind of clear up some in uh, you know some congestion and i need an excuse to drink then that's the cocktail i'm going for that's for sure I usually go with a hot toddy, so you know, you still get the lemon and the you get honey and um, and, then, and bourbon and bourbon. There you go. Mm -hmm. So right we're on. gonna go one more minute on hashtag Cove. We've got thirty four entries, forty four in chat. If you want free whiskey, type hashtag Cove into the chat. In one minute, we're gonna give away some whiskey. Whiskey Banks here. Cheers. Nice to see you. I hope you haven't been here a while and I missed it. I also see Whiskey Shaman is here. Cheers to you as well. And a new name I haven't seen. CJ Broussard, Broussard, something like that. I'm really bad at pronouncing where's, names. Where's so it? it's uh, there's two S's. So is that an S sound or a sh sound? Broussard? Broussard. Something like that. We're usually wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> hope it doesn't offend you. I hope you appreciate the effort. <laughs> So yeah, this this Madeira finished is quite good. It's uh, got kind of an Asian pear vibe on on the mm. palate. It's a good note. I like it. Uh, it's a little peachy for me. I feel like I think I got like a like a like a fresh like a, no sorry like a a very old peach that's like super sweet, uh, and you get like some of those uh, like more syrupy flavors with it. But yeah, really great. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. I'm glad I recognized those on the shelf behind you. This was a good call. So Laura's going to sh share the screen real quick, and we're going to give away some whiskey. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Uh, give me no notice here. I, gotta... I gave you one minute notice. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's not the right one. Oh, we got uh, Frank the Tuna Man in the house. Yes new to our stream but we have seen you in other streams before so that's awesome okay let's go with our 36 entries here we go hoping it's me it's a tuna man. Look at that. last entry gets the win <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting <laughs> so email is on the screen i want you to email me your information so i can have my guy hand deliver this to you yep <laughs> rigged as uh bourbon syndicate says <laughs> let's let's come we up. know you're still in chat to be able to since you just entered so perfect yep let's throw another hashtag out there for the other free giveaway patrick why don't you pick out the hashtag for us this time any hashtag rigged. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hashtag uh, hashtag Pendaren. Okay, don't enter it yet because Laura, uh, Laura's gonna I gotta spell type it. it out and not yeah. spell it wrong. The and then I'll put it in chat so that you guys and, Yeah, I apologize because uh, I forgot that that has a uh, funky spelling with a Y in the N at the end. It's my it's just spelled probably not how it sounds to Americans. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just, put it there. I'll put it. Just copy and paste it 
I'll put it all <laughs> over the place so people can uh, can get it right. There and you if go. they don't get it right, they can they get multiple chances. Yep. Just keep putting comments in until you get the right word. We'll also <laughs> take this opportunity to. Oh, I threw them on the floor. Let me pick them up real quick. I'm just throwing stuff on the floor. I know. I'm, I'm like all out of sorts here. <laughs> so if you were not here at the beginning of the stream, I, I mentioned that I reordered some milk carton mat stickers. And, I'm, and I've got the last handful of the large trash pallet stickers. With your $5 super chat tonight, you're going to get entered into the the drawing for the Hardens Creek flight. Which I'll show it again. And there you will go. just let me know, message us, let me know you want both stickers. I'll give you both stickers if you just want one or the other. Let us know that as well. Guys, when these are gone, they're gone. I'm not ordering any more after this. We're moving on. We're going to start doing uh, sticker of the month, I think. Yep. So uh, he's a creative one. I'm definitely not creating stickers, but he will be creating stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. They seem to be be going over well. People like their stickers. See, Bourbon School said still. You haven't gotten your sticker yet? It's been like two weeks. How long does it take to get to you? Wow. <laughs> I think it's been longer than two weeks. I, I it's mean, a long shipment. <laughs> stuff takes a while to get to Buffalo, but Brian, I'll I'll just send you another one, and there'll be one. I, I actually there were two in there. There was one for you and Lauren. I'll th I'll, I'll, I'll send two more. <laughs> Richie J, that's another new name, mm -hmm. and the uh, the Bourbon Bitch is also here. So. <laughs> I didn't know if I should say that or not. You might as well. Uh, it's spelled differently, so it's appropriate, right? At, at this point in the stream, I don't think that YouTube is going to shut us down for that. Yeah, it's usually the first, like, <laughs> 10 minutes of the stream that they care how you, so, what you say. Patrick, hopefully you're getting exposed to some new subscribers tonight. I know, you know, every channel kind of has their, their, their subset of subscribers. We, we bring new people on to show our subscribers other channels that are out there that they might not know about. Um, and, you know, you can bring your subscribers along. That's why you advertise on your channel that, that you're going to be here. Um, <clears throat> assuming you get some new ones tonight, <clears throat> what is the first video that those new subscribers should watch from your collection? Um. See, I wish you would have sent me this question first because I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, honestly, I don't know. See, I always say that, you know, uh, the reviews generally is where you can get all. If you want to, you know, hear my take and how I taste whiskey, talk through whiskey and stuff like that, that's a good place to start. Uh, but if you're not coming to YouTube, not for information, you come for entertainment. Then some of the blind battles are really good. Uh, I need to. I need to have something. I need to look at my phone. Uh, but I think uh, <clears throat> I have no idea. That is a great question. You've absolutely stumped me. <laughs> I will find something. But I'll maybe just go to my landing page because I think I have a pretty good one on my landing page. Uh, so, like, if you go over to YouTube, you search the Whiskey Cove, and it goes to my channel. Uh, I think it's like nine allocated bourbons uh, that you have to find. Uh, but that again, that's a video that might not speak to everybody. Um, and I also do shorts as well, but they like throw away stuff shorts. So I just do them because people like to watch them, but it, it, the information on that is just, it is what it is. It's nothing too, uh, it's nothing too gospel on it. Um, but, uh, I guess the best video probably for you to watch is the next one to get released because you'll be a subscriber. So thank you for doing that. There you go. <clears throat> Great answer. And and I love them because you're so full of energy. I mean, you're not sitting down in your videos. You're standing up and you're kind of pacing back and forth. You got a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've noticed I, I, you, you you don't stand still at all. You're you're constantly moving in your videos. Well, like I've I've been trying to get up throughout this whole thing. <laughs> so I gotta keep sitting myself <laughs> like that. <laughs> all stuff because I'm like I'm not I'm not used to sitting down. And I love talking about whiskey, it's just so fun and uh, when I was doing some of the reviews and some of the videos in the beginning, 
uh like i wanted to come to just like i love your videos man you're really enthusiastic but like all the movement makes me a little bit sick so i kind of toned it down a little bit <laughs> uh which i think i should probably shouldn't have because i think a lot of the reason why people generally watch the videos i think is just because you know i'm really enthusiastic about usually about the stuff and i try to be very direct about it uh i did a review on travelers whiskey uh which is obviously buffalo trace uh, absolutely uh, and it did not go well for Buffalo Trace. I give the lowest score that I've ever given. So what you can expect from some of the stuff that I do is just honesty, really just ge just being genuine about it. And if that messes stuff up for me, or if it uh, pisses a few people off, but, you know, so be it. You know, I've got nothing to lose. I'm just here for a good time and to, to, to be genuine with people. So uh, that's the only thing I can lose is, uh, is like genuine, uh, hum uh, that, that really humid humility, I guess, that aspect of it. I don't even know if there was a question there, but yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so so a, a couple things here dave dave vogel saying says he likes your wet bottles to look for each month oh, oh yeah there you go, there you go. that's a, that's a very popular video series that uh really put the whiskey cove on the map in terms of views on that specific video uh it was like i saw other can i speak to this yeah I, i'm gonna do it anyway uh yeah, yeah absolutely i thought i would I saw other videos that other whiskey channels that do like uh, whiskeys that are going to be coming out this year, uh, whiskey that you know like Q one, Q two, Q three that I think like uh, bourbon junkies do, and I was like, you know, there's just so much stuff coming out right now, and it's just like nonstop, and it's not just the macro stuff. I try to really blend that video in well with like, yes, you get some like big releases from big distilleries, but then you also get. Uh, and I also try to promote like smaller stuff that people might not be aware of and people might not know mixed in with that as well. Uh, and I try to do it in a really quick format. So like I'm just, I, I, I'm not even breathing during the videos. And I have a piece of paper in my hand. It's like boom, 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 boom. We just knock out. It's kind of like, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like an informative news, I guess, in a way. And, uh, uh, and then it gives people a really good baseline to kind of be like, okay, these are coming out this month. This is something I didn't really think about. I need to keep an eye out for this bottle. Now when I go through different stores and be, be on the ready for that label. And that, I think I did that video the first month that the Whiskey Cove started. And I think every one of those videos got at least a thousand views, and then it kept getting better and, better and better and better and better and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, it's been the backbone of the ch that and reviews have been the backbone of, of the Whiskey Co channel, and people seem to really like them. And it's a long way to continue because I really like doing them as well. And it's it's the video I have to generally do the most research for, uh, which can take a little bit of time. I have to print out some stuff, but uh, it, it definitely worked out. That's a great recommendation. Dave's the man as well. He comments on like so many of my videos and always engaging oh, and comments yeah. with other people yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Dave, such, Dave is a great a subscriber. Mm -hmm. Absolute pillar of the bourbon community. So, That's what your whiskey community. <clears throat> yes. So I just uh, poured a sample from one of the guys in the chat here, uh, Piper John. This is the Proof and Wood, the Stranger. It's 100% Polish rye, distilled in Poland, aged seven years in the USA, in X bourbon and X rye barrels, coming in at 105 proof. It's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm kind of digging what it's doing. And there's a question. So uh, barrel and grain wants to know what your daily drinker is. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, and I feel like we're amongst bourbon people right now, so I don't necessarily have the preference to people that I don't drink whiskey every day. You know, I drink whiskey generally around the weekend if I'm going to drink it, but I'm also a very avid craft beer fan as well. Uh, but my daily drinker has to be, uh, it's, it, it, it definitely changes. Uh, as you know, as you're tasting through different whiskey and whatnot, but this whiskey has just been a fundamental since I tried it, and it's uh, early times bottled a bond. Fortunately enough, we can find it in Colorado. It's cheap. It's like 23 bucks. You get a one liter bottle. It's cheap. It's tasty. You can put it into a cocktail. It's phenomenal, phenomenal daily drinker. Uh, I could I get and also a daily drinker. I, I have uh, I have like a shelf to the side of me here, uh, and I kind of have like a lineup of some stuff that it's uh, uh, that are on deck if you like. And the, these are bottles that I'm like almost sick to the sick to the sight of seeing. So like if if a bottle ends up on deck, like it needs to be drunk, and I need to get it out to the whiskey cup because I just don't even want to look at it. However, there is one bottle <laughs> that has just been lingering around on this shelf because it's so bad and i just can't get myself to drink it 
and I only have this oh, the shelf only holds like eight bottles and it's quite a big bottle. It's just taking up so much room. People come down here and they play poker down in the whiskey cove. And uh, if it's the first time here, they'll have a sip, but they'll never get a second one. Uh, and it is <laughs> it is this guy. It is it has a really cool sticker. You know, it looks the part. Hold on, let me make it mean, big. We're, we're gonna sell it. Hold on a second. There you go. I don't mean to crap oh, on yeah, distilleries, cool but sticker. like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to speak Fairy the truth. Crunch. You know, uh, and it, it is Town Branch, and it is this Town six branch. years straight oh, dry, finished, uh, and it, pens, uh, it is a uh, chocolate berry crunch, and uh, I, something went wrong. I don't know what went wrong. Something went wrong, and it's is gnarly. <laughs> it's uh, either that or my wife when maybe we argued or something, and she pulled like nail varnish remover or nail remover or whatever that is into you because it, it's pretty <laughs> rough and uh it still looks pretty it's still, full that's gonna take a while <laughs> it's yeah. so full so, there's nothing i can do in there so I don't if, know if you need help do. getting rid of that you yeah. should send a sample to dave vogel saying i hear he's got a trash pallet <laughs> <laughs> Since he's in here. There you go. <laughs> it, it, it's become such like a conversation <laughs> piece now as well that it's it, it's it would be a shame to see it go because it is the right up there with some of the worst whiskey that I've ever had. And I apologize to Town Branch upon that out there. <laughs> but sometimes the, people do single barrels and they just get them wrong. And sadly, this was one of those. Yeah, just kidding, Dave. We love you. <laughs> he. <laughs> He, he agreed though. He said, I do. To the trash <laughs> uh, Whiskey Wisdom said, we need to blind that with the lazy guy. Something went wrong with the lazy guy too. <laughs> so how many entries do we have for the free giveaway? Uh, we have 34, 50, 50 in chat. 50 in the chat, 34. Hashtag Pandaren. and we're going to give it like four more minutes. And then we're going to give away some more whiskey. But yeah, so back to this uh, proof in wood, uh, the stranger Polish rye, or yeah, yeah Polish rye, Polish Still rye, in Poland, aged seven years in USA, ex bourbon, ex rye barrels. This is a pretty. I, I'm really digging this, uh, Piper John. Thanks so much for this. So it sounds like it was distilled in Poland, and then they just sent the distillate over to the US to be aged. That's yeah, that's, that's what it sounds kind like. of what the. You know, and he hand wrote that on there, so I'm assuming well, that's what the the process was. But it's really, really good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I've i never had a Polish whiskey before. I've had some really that's strange, right. interesting thing stuff like, but uh, never had Polish before. Okay, I was questioning if it was a rye when I smelled it, but it definitely tastes like you, a rye. You definitely get the rye on the palate. I for didn't. Sure. It didn't. I would have guessed like bourbon on the nose. That smells real fruity and sweet and bright yeah so you mentioned a project with uh everyday drinker nathan i believe any other upcoming projects or collaborations you can tell us about uh so char uh, me and charles have been speaking uh that that, that bourbon dude i think uh, that's what it is uh, not that I don't know his whiskey channel, it's just uh, there's too much things going on in my mind right now. But I think it's that that bourbon dude, and it's a fairly new channel to be fair. Uh, mm -hmm. So like, uh... yeah, that bourbon dude, I did have it right. Yeah, so we'll be doing something. We'll be doing a live stream together. Uh, he's been a supporter of the channel for a long time, and uh, he started his own YouTube whiskey channel. So. Uh, and I, I, still in his infancy, I think he, he's only been around for like a month or two. So it'll be really awesome uh, to spend some time with him. And we actually got on, uh, we got on a stream, uh, just kind of checking out the streamyard actually, because he he picked up streamyard, uh, and we would just, we ended up just talking for like half hour just about whiskey in general. So really easy, natural conversation. And I think we'll just be tasting maybe uh, last scenario from last year. I think the C923 batch that everybody was raving about. I think we'll be doing that maybe, and we also. I've sent him, uh, I'll be doing this with the same with Everyday Drinker. I've sent him four bottle samples of whiskey from different categories, uh, uh, monetary categories. So like 25 or less, 50 or less, 75 or less, and then more than 75. And then we're, we're going to blind those samples. At the same time, I'll blind the ones that uh, 
that I sent him as well. So we'll be drinking the same whiskey and then he's going to put them in an order and then we'll just see kind of how that is reflected by the price. And then we'll do, okay. uh, and then we'll do the vice versa. So he's sending me some samples and then we'll do his blind then as well and so on and so forth, which will be really interesting to see if money does truly reflect quality of whiskey. So that'll be a fun one. Yeah, I, I like it. That sounds like a lot of fun. Any yeah. uh, Whiskey Cove single barrel picks coming in the future? So that is massively on my radar. Uh, that is something that I am uh, engaged in right now. I had some, uh, I thought that I had a pretty good run with Copper Sky like a, a year ago, but uh, they said they were going to send me out some single barrel uh, samples and I was going to pick one and they, they for whatever reason never did. And I, 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 I kind of knew the owner as well, so I was surprised that never happened. But I guess maybe here's something that he delegates or whatnot. So I've been in contact with distrib uh, distributors here in Colorado, and I am working with them. Like, if I wanted to get a single barrel, I could get one, like, right away. But it's not something that I'm, uh, that I'm really interested in. And I want, my, I want a single barrel to be something that reflects uh, my own tastes and whatnot. So the distributor I kind of got involved with, uh, I'm on their list of, you know, single barrels when they come to Colorado is actually a distributor who does distributors, Doc Swinson's. And also part of the conversation I had with Jesse Parker when the cameras were shut off was, was pretty centered around some of that stuff as well. So uh, he, he, he was pretty keen and open about something that could happen. So I would love to be able to say that I could try to secure a Doc Swinson single barrel because that's definitely a direction they're trying to go into as well. Uh, and also, as well, um, still Austin. I think they're pushing this single barrel program here in Colorado. Uh, I spoke to the Colorado rep at a store, actually, and we talked quite a bunch. I touched base with him a little bit. So, you know, maybe you never know. We'll see. That would be really exciting, though. Uh, still Austin are knocking out some phenomenal stuff. I haven't actually reviewed any of the oh, stuff yeah. on my channel yet. But uh, their new bottled in bond uh, that they released, if you're someone who likes rye, they use a specific rye grain that's from Texas. I can't remember the name of the rye grain, but when I tried it, what it does and what it adds to the whiskey is that it almost is so cherry forward. You, If someone give you this whiskey and you tried it and they told you, oh, yeah, this is finished in like a cherry liqueur or a cherry brandy barrel, you'll be like, oh, yeah, definitely. And it's so cherry forward. But that's just like the natural note that comes from, uh, from that grain. And it also has some of those like Texas – uh, like pot still type vibes where you have like the sweet and like a little bit of the spicy. If your someone has tried a bunch of Texas whiskey like Balcona's, TX, Garrison Brothers, there is this flavor profile that comes with those whiskeys that is pretty obvious that it's from Texas. It definitely has some of that as well, but then it has like this cherry or cure note, which is insanity that you're able to get that from uh, a grain or a, a wood and not add like natural or uh, artificial flavors because it is so prominent. So if you see that ball, I think it's not even that expensive. I think it's like fifty, sixty dollars. Uh, definitely pick that up. And there is their own blended whiskey, and that's the company that Nancy is it Nancy Frala and uh, that's involved with. She's like the blender and the taster. So you know it's going to be pretty decent stuff when she's involved with something. But uh, yeah, f f phenomenal whiskey that is. And if if we can ever get something with Doc Swinson's like a single bar or something, that would be pretty cool because everything I've tested from them has just been uh, legit. The same with Doc Swinson's. It would be nice to get something from uh, a distillery that's kind of definitely on the up and up as well. And maybe maybe something that someone hasn't tried before, but then when they try it, it would just like open it would like open their mind to like some areas of a craft whiskey or blended or finishing whiskey. So that would be something I would try to do before the end of the year, but who knows? Maybe I might just not have the time to be able to do it, uh, but it would be really nice to be able to do it. Sure. So mm -hmm. Jabber Jaws asks the question, uh, what bottle have you been saving to pop on a special occasion? So I, I've been really fortunate this last yeah, I've popped some really good bottles. Uh, we got picked up. Uh, so last year during a lottery, I was able to get George T. Stag, and I know it's like uh, I don't know these sort of bottles can be construed as like Tater bottles, but the 20, uh, 2023 George T. Stag that was sixty nine point three five percent ABV wild so insane and then last christmas i was able to get the weller william larue from a lottery here in colorado so i popped this one open 
and then also as well um, the old Forester 1924 we picked up and the Jack Daniels barrel proof rye were all pretty bottle, uh, great bottles but then when it comes to like special balls you're thinking of stuff that you're not going to find all the time you know stuff that you don't want to open and I always try to open up these bottles as best you know as soon as I get them to do like reviews it's not stuff that I can then like to sit on so I would say that but then I also have uh, I also have a Johnny Walker Blue that I was given from my wife uh, when we got married like six years ago uh, that I haven't opened and it's like scribed on the front of the bottle like both of our names like a wedding date and stuff so that's something that's like really special that I'm just just kind of sitting on and one of my subscribers gave me a good idea that every time uh, it's our anniversary I should just have a pull from the bottle until it's gone or like make it into a lamp or something so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so they're, yeah, they're that probably... sounds like a great idea. Oh, I also have this ball above my bald head. Yeah, this this one right there. Is it is it a, one in the box? Yeah, is so a it's Michter's? a Michter's. That is a Michter's. So I went down to uh, I went down to Kentucky oh, for what so seems to be uh, what seems to be against my wife's best wishes, an annual trip these days, and it was. Um, <laughs> I was able to line up. I had a tip off from uh, someone who was at a hotel I was staying at, and they said, you want to probably go to Michter's because every now and again, they'll have people come in and they'll get to fill up their own single barrel product, which is what this is. Uh, so you're able to like pull the thing that comes out of the ground, shoots the whiskey into the, in, into the bottle. And I think this is the only way that you can ever get, right now at least, a Michter's barrel strength single barrel is by doing this because it's not on like a general sale or release. So it's this guy. So you can't you can't like buy it from the store. So the only way you can get it is you have to do that fucking thing. Excuse my French. Uh, but um, the like you you have to like write your name on the bottle. Like it's like a legal thing. You have to like write your legal legitimate name. But I really wanted to put the whiskey cove on there. So what I did was I wrote my real name on the sticker and then I said that I wrote something wrong. So she gave me a new fresh sticker and as soon as I left, I peeled that one off and put the whiskey coat one on. So I have the whiskey coat. <laughs> <wrote that. laughs> I love it. <laughs> August August 11th, 2023 is when it was bottled. 54.7% ABV and just something. And it's also on the frontier as well, the whiskey coat. So super unique and special. Um, I don't know when I'll open it. Maybe... Christmas time or something like that, but yeah, it maybe if I go back to Kentucky this year, I get another one. I'll definitely open it then as well. Yeah, we we don't have any bottle. We don't really save bottles just for special occasions. We do have some that aren't opened, but it's more we haven't gotten them to them yet. We also um, recently picked up that uh, William Leroux Weller. Uh, our lottery was a bit later than yours, so we got it like a month ago. But then. We got COVID right after that and couldn't smell or taste anything. So we haven't popped it yet, but, but we plan to now that we have our taste and smell back. I mean, it wouldn't be worth it to pop it then, but but now we will. Was, it, was it this year's? Like the most recent? Yeah, it was, William yeah, yeah. It was the uh, most recent one. So yeah. David over at Whiskey Bank just put a comment oh. on there. Um, he said he's always been a fan of the Whiskey Cove. He sent Patrick an email before he started his own channel for some advice. And and you gave him some office, awesome advice and encouragement. So, yeah, I, rem awesome. I remember the email. Yeah, yeah David, I sorry, David I was a guest on our channel as well. Yeah, I saw that during the intro video. Actually, I was like, I, I know that guy. I've seen him. Before. Yeah, I know David. he he actually hit a thousand subscribers while he was live with us. So that was oh, really nice. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> really special occasion. Like, and uh, I haven't had the opportunity, as I said earlier on, to watch uh, more of his recent stuff. But some of his videos from the beginning were pretty special and pretty good. So definitely keep up with that, David, as well. And he always comments on some of the videos of my own videos as well, which is pretty cool. And it again adds to kind of like the whiskey and bourbon community of like people are just, you know, people are just pleasant, I guess, is the best way I can put it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. switched over to the RD1 Amberana. This is a sample from mm -hmm. Andy Road. Um, much slower than you. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this one quite a bit. I think we went a couple minutes long on the hashtag Pandaren. Let's share the screen and give away some whiskey. Yeah, I think that was the longest four minutes oh, for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's that's usually how our streams go. We say it's going to be a couple minutes, and then it's like ten. So, yeah. uh, okay, let's see. Drawing. Let's see who wins. Very exciting drama, drama. Mark, Mark Gale. Gale. Oh, I love it. I wasn't sure you. Were... 
we're still in chat, so how exciting. Is it removing? Okay, a little yep. lag there. Yep. And uh, one, one more quick opportunity to promote the Super Chat giveaway, and we're going to give that away in about 15 more minutes. Um, I'll let Laura share the the flight on the screen. It is uh, four two-ounce samples of the Hardens Creek. We've got the Jacobs Well, which I believe is 15 and a half years. <laughs> Claremont, Frankfurt, and Boston, which are all 17 years. And along with that, I'm going to give away Milk Carton Mat and the Large Trash Pallet sticker. If you don't want both, just email us and say which one you want. Or if you want both, I'm going to send you both. But about 15 more minutes, and we're going to do that drawing as well. <laughs> and then I think we're going to open up the, the chat. Uh, we're going to have a brief hangout tonight because this is the uh, Veterans Live Stream Night. Mark over at Northwest Bourbon is going to go live at 9 p.m. Pacific for the Veterans Live Stream. And we encourage everybody to jump over there and support him. Mark's a great guy, and he's doing great things for veterans. Yeah. I got nothing to add. Hashtag bless you. I'm, uh, <laughs> Whiskey <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> so Let's try to any, this. any <laughs> yeah, if, if any of you in the chat have questions for Patrick at Whiskey Cove or the Bakers, uh, put them in there, and we will we'll get those asked, and we will hopefully answer your question. Um, and Laura's going to scroll oh, back and see if there's anybody new in the chat that we need to recognize. Well, I'm scrolling up. Oh, oh, that's what you're that's saying. What yeah. I said. I'm uh, going through because <laughs> sometimes with those hashtags, there's so many comments scrolling that I, yeah, I miss it goes, a lot. It goes real quick. I saw Timber Cruise, which is a local to us uh, out at the coast. I don't really see anything. Actually, I, I worked today for about a half a day and then uh, met up with one of our subscribers here locally. And he, he gifted the channel a bottle. It's the uh, the Rebel Small Batch Reserve. I didn't even know that was a thing. So, so. now Lux Row was recently, well, not recently, <laughs> recently-ish purchased by MGP. Previously, the Rebel 10-year line was sourced out of Heaven Hill, and it's the same juice that they make the uh, Old Fitz out of. So if you got a Rebel 10-year, you basically got a 10-year old Old Fitz. Um, but what they've done since they've been acquired by MGP is all of that remaining sourced stock whiskey, they blended it together and they put it out as the Rebel Reserve small batch. And... Uh, this subscriber to our channel that I met up with here in town after work today gifted us a bottle of that. And it's quite amazing. We haven't tasted it yet, but I was super happy to meet him and get that bottle from him. And there'll be a review coming soon. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Didn't even know it was a thing. So that's always more fun to get a bottle that you've never even heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of that bottle, Patrick? Uh, the, I've heard of the 10. And I know they just released uh, a six-year hundred proof one, and uh, they also put out a bunch of store picks, like a distillers selection and like cast strength rebels before. Uh, but I, ha I haven't heard that the the rebel was it like reserve? You said small batch. small batch reserve. That's kind of what it's transitioned into from the ten years. Yeah, so it's it's the remaining sourced Heaven Hill uh, stock. Mm -hmm before they switch over to, I, I assume, MGP, since that's who's purchased them. You know, Lux Row was the always... The label looks I, a lot like the single mm -hmm. barrels or the cask strength. That looks very okay. similar to that. It just says different words. I should just go grab it and show it, right? That would be helpful. That, that, that way we're not just talking about it. You guys can actually see it. I'll be right back. I'm definitely, more, uh, I'm definitely more of a picture person as well, so that helps. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Me too. When I, was, when I was doing the... I did like a blood oath our taste through and part of that was me like researching like the blood off blends which is blood off being lux uh lux row lux go um and i was surprised actually at how much uh aged heaven hill distillate they've been able to get their hands on so they must have had a really good 
uh, a really good relationship, working relationship with Heaven Hill because some of the some of the blends for the blood oaks they had like 18 year heaven hill juice like 15 year heaven hill juice in the blends and also with that 10 year as well it just kind of uh, i wonder if they are still have access to it now being owned by uh ross and square by mgp uh let's kind of see what that is but i was surprised uh, that uh how good that was but i also think that uh, here. i also think that uh some of the the whiskey that they have uh in the the, the, the Lux Row is a pretty, especially the Distillers picks, it's really great value for money. I think you can pick up some of those picks like 40 bucks, and it's like cast strength as well. Uh, and it's really great. But I, if that changes with the new ownership, maybe it might be. But if you see any of the old ones, it's definitely worth you know picking one up. What's the uh, bottle look like there, boss? Okay, yeah, here, so let me let she'll, me make she'll it solo bigger. us. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I've, ne I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, so let me hide my face, maybe it'll focus there. Focus. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. yeah. So, and and interesting enough, I I don't want to blow the guy up, so I'll just give his first name. The subscriber's name was Patrick, and he texted me, and I thought it was you texting me because I gave <laughs> you my cell number a while back. <laughs> so the the conversation started off kind of interesting, and then I was like, oh okay, I'll... different Patrick. <laughs> <Yeah>. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just like, oh, are you ready for tonight? Are you ready for tomorrow? Like, what's going on? Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to come to town. I'll, I'll bring that bottle. And I was like, you're coming to town. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's just do the video at our house. Let's just do it now. <laughs> no need to do it over the channel. <laughs> what's your problem? Uh, well, you know, you guys talked a little bit about outfits. So I'm going to knock outfits. out the outfits 19. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunate, I was able to get this in the lottery. I think uh, uh, towards the start of last year, which is really nice. Uh, there's a store in Denver called Argonauts, one of the family-owned liquor stores I was referring to earlier on, and they do monthly lotteries. And this place has one of the best relationships with Sazerac slash Buffalo Trace that I know of because they always seem to have like Buffalo Trace single barrel picks constantly. And they always have so much stuff like unicorn bottles from them. And they just did this last month. They just had a Blanton's gold single barrel. Uh, and the months before that, they had a Weller 107 single barrel and a Buffalo wow. Trace single barrel and, and an Eagle Rare single barrel. So every month they'll do a, a lottery or a raffle. So if you, you you can put one you can put one ticket in, but then every store pick that you buy from them, you can add a second ticket. Uh, so if there's something that I really want, I'll like hold off doing much shopping until that comes out, and then I'll, I'll try to hit it as best as I can. So I was fortunate I was able to get this. But sometimes they'll do uh, like William Luruella will be on there as well, and like just really rare balls. Uh, and they have like a whiskey Wednesday thing every Wednesday. They go live on Facebook, uh, and they uh, they announce like stuff going on, and they'll taste through some of the single barrel picks, and then they'll draw like a winner, which is pretty cool. So I was able to get that for like, and they sell everything at MSRP as well. I can't speak highly enough about those guys. Family run business, big liquor store, get great stuff. Uh, and, and they're able to handle the allocated stuff correctly as well, which is like uh, they do the single barrel picks through lotteries. Uh, so like people can put their ticket in. So it's not just like you're showing up. You have to show up with the crack of dawn and all that before to try to get an opportunity. It's like a good way to reward their loyal customers. So can't speak highly enough. If you're ever in Denver, you should definitely go and check them out. Uh, and like, I think I paid, I want to think I paid like maybe like uh, like low 200s for this, right out of MSRP, whatever it was. And uh, it's okay. It's not too bad. All fits 19. I think all, all fits in general is uh, is just okay. Uh, not worth the hunt, but worth the MSRP, if, if that makes sense. It's a very, yeah. very pretty bottle. Yeah, I mean, the bottle's worth $50 by itself, so. <laughs> you know, I, I, but, I uh, thought I thought I would have broken the cork by now just because, like, it's always stuck in there so much, and it's literally, I don't even see that. It's just, like, glue. I can see the it's crease, like, yeah. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit in the glass. There's no, like, groove for it to sit in. It's just, like, glued on top of glass, so it's just mated like that. So like, and strength, you need to put a little bit of elbow work to get this thing out of there. 
so I'm surprised that it hasn't crumbled. I'm a real Coke it's not a synthetic one. So I'm really surprised I haven't lost the Coke to, to the bottle yet. And I have a I have a, like a nine year as well up there. Uh, but uh, beautiful, beautiful bottle. Like, you know, anytime someone comes down in the whiskey cove and they see this bottle, oh, they're looking around the bottles, they always like will hallmark this, like, oh, what the heck is this? Like this looks like some some vintage thing from back in like the back end of the prohibition or something like that. Be- beautiful bottle. <laughs> Looks like a butt touch. Lee for a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lee. <laughs> yeah. And uh, April Short. Nice to see a new name and another female. I like it. Maybe, Are maybe a female. I'm, I'm, Did I'm you guessing. Just assume I'm gender. Just assuming it just, you know, I assume. In 2024, you're assuming gender. Hey, I get oh. excited when there's someone with a female ish name this this one i also assume mrs Lori j i assume that's a female and uh cheers to you <laughs> so <laughs> i'm throwing you off aren't i <laughs> so we, we've only had one one old fits and we got a pour at one of our local bars it, I it think was it, like one of their youngest i think it was, it was like an, a nine it was an eight, eight. How, eight how young did they get i think it was an eight year we did not like it at all. It tasted a lot like the Larceny. It was very grassy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same mash bill, right? Same same mash bill, I believe. Yes. Uh, I've mm-hmm. I've heard as it gets older, it gets better. Well, I mean, we love Rebel Ten, which is the same mash bill. Well, so. And the Rebel Tens usually are coming in more like eleven and a half, twelve years. So I'm sure that the older ones are really good. We just we just had one that was not as good. Yeah, you know so what I, I haven't seen? Candy... I was going to say, I, I was speaking with the Heaven Hill stuff. You know what I haven't seen for a while is Larcenary single barrels. And like they used to do single barrel picks like all the time. We used to be able to get them, and they were like seven to eight years old, and they were really great. They were like twenty five dollars. But I haven't seen the same as the Elijah Craig single barrels. And I'm not talking about the barrel proof ones, but just like the regular single barrel offerings. I think they've just gone away. But the last new ones, if you don't typically like last new, those single barrels were really special. And I don't know what it was. Maybe like a little bit more age, but they were really good. Yeah, we've we've got a couple of those uh, Elijah Craig ninety four proof single barrels mm-hmm. around us. We we've yeah, got one. one. It's okay, and I, I like it. Laura's kind of on the fence, but uh, I I think they they definitely up the game with the single barrel version of that ninety four proofer. I, mm-hmm. I appreciate what they're doing, and and again, it was like thirty bucks. It wasn't it wasn't expensive. It was. I've never seen a larceny pick though. I've not seen a larceny pick. Mm-hmm. No. They must. They must not have been around us or at the stores we've shopped at. But even, yeah, I think even I stopped, like the Larceny about two years ago. About two years ago, I think I, I stopped I was seeing gonna them. Say, oh, okay. Yeah, e- even the Larceny barrel proofs when they come out on the the one one two four five two four nine two four or whatever, they're they're probably about one of those to ten of the Elijah Craig's. The Larceny's yeah, just not just as not as much around here. For some yeah, reason. I think some it, places say it's like all larceny, and we're like heavy on the Elijah Craig. Yeah, I think it's because like the 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 regular standard uh, offerings of larceny single barrels went away right around the same time the the barrel proof versions came out. So it was probably oh. just a prediction uh, that uh, that they were going to do more of the barrel proof stuff. But we get so much Heaven Hill stuff here in Colorado. Like I, I like I know of multiple stores that have Henry McKenna Elijah Craig barrel proof larceny barrel proof on the shelf at all times. There. Uh, we never get the C batches for whatever reason of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which seem to be the best ones in recent years, uh, which is a cry and shame. But we get A's for days. So if you want to get an A batch of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, then Colorado is the place to go. Yeah, we seem to be pretty even with the batches. Well, B batch always seems to last the longest. I don't know. I don't know if they make a bigger batch or they just send more to Oregon, but B batch usually sticks around pretty much year round you can get a b batch and then the other batches go pretty quick yeah. but we we get them all and they're fairly easy to find yeah, yeah i think traditionally right when they come out i think traditionally b is be my favorite batches i blinded some of the best uh like c919 uh, c923 c920 and b520 and b520 came out on top but it, it was such a group uh, that's the best Elijah Craig barrel proof I've ever had. That B520 is phenomenal. Oh, nice. It's 
I think we have that one. It's been a while since we've drank it. Yeah. I think 20 is when we started getting collecting the Elijah Craig's. Now we have a whole shelf full of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah. So I, I can speak to that as well. I, <laughs> I, I just saw Gandhi Road comment in the chat. I just finished the sample of the RD1 Amberana that you gifted us. I'm, I'm a big fan. Laura's just about I to just take it. I she's just about to take her first sip. So I wish I could zoom in on her face because she's not an Amberana <laughs> fan. Oh my gosh, this is the first one I've actually gotten that <laughs> cinnamon toast crunch that everyone talks about. They, they say that they say the RD1 Amberana is probably the best. No, that one like is straight up that flavor, <laughs> that like cereal. That's really good. I like that one. We, we have to get a bottle of that one. Oh, it's not even available here. We can probably find it online to get shipped to us. That one's actually good. It's like seriously like the cereal. Yeah. I like it. And, and I just poured a sample from one of our uh, patrons, uh, Michael Bortner. This is the Old Soul Single Barrel. It is a uh, American single malt coming in at about 119.1 proof. And uh, we got a couple people that showed up in chat. Old Fashioned Ways, plus plus. Cheers, Doc. And then we got RJ the Fed. He's still at work, but he's going to tune in shortly. Yep. So we've got, well, we're right at the time. Let's uh, let's give away some whiskey. Okay. Uh, so everyone that's super chatted for the Hardens Creek, we'll give a, we'll spin the wheel for that. That. Let me find it to be able to share the screen here. Troy gives me no warning. He's I gave you 15 minutes of warning. <laughs> I'm supposed to do stuff, you know. He he just talks and I'm supposed to do all the technology stuff, you know. I couldn't do that technology stuff. So this is truly a theme effort here. <laughs> I'm squeaking over here. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle like three times. One, two, three. And and make sure you eat email us and and let us know everybody who super chatted email us let us know that you want one sticker or the other otherwise you're just going to get both and but if we I, still need your address and if i don't so. have your address i need you to email us so i can send it to you anyways okay let's spin it here we, we go the uh our, our email on the screen here oh who we got oh dave vogel saying Winning. Hey, Winning Dave. Sam. Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> Dave. I, I've, I've got your contact info, Dave. <laughs> but for everyone else that wants a sticker, send us your, email, your information so we can get it to you. Yeah. So uh, this, this is the time of the night, Patrick, where we're going to open it up. We're going to post the link in the chat. We're going to let some people jump in with us. You're, you're Are you, welcome uh... to hang out with us if you... I, I was going to say before, you, are you able to spin that wheel again? I, I, I feel uh, I feel like I, I oh, can yeah. give away give away a bottle for someone. Uh, we have this thing on the Whiskey Cove where if you see a Buffalo Trace single barrel, you pick it up. So I'd love to give away a Buffalo Trace single barrel to someone on the stream right oh, now. Oh, whole bottle! Wow. This, is, this is a much better spin than. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who gets the better better thing here. We got. Oh, are, are you kidding me? It's, now someone's got to say rigged. We got to say rigged here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> rigged. <laughs> uh, are so Dave, Dave, me? Uh, hit, hit me up on email. I'll get sent over to you, boss. Okay. If you need my email address, just go on any whiskey code uh, video on it in the, uh, the box down below. Very, very generous. Thank you, Patrick. So no we're going to post the link in the chat. <laughs> And we're gonna let some some people join us. If if you need to get on with your life, that's cool. If you want to hang out and and visit some fans for a while, that's cool as well. We're gonna do this for about an hour, and then we're gonna shut her down. We're gonna jump over to Northwest Bourbon for the veterans live stream after that. Um, so yeah. So feel free whenever you want to leave. Go ahead and yeah, leave. I'll, you're you're welcome I'll, to stay I'll, the whole time as well. I'll definitely hang out with you a little bit longer. You know. So. If that's all good with good with you folks then yeah you know good whiskey definitely good whiskey good times right like like yeah, minded exactly. friends i love it so do you watch college basketball patrick 
Uh, so I'm familiar with uh, college basketball. I don't particularly like basketball in general, but I do take part of um, the work uh, bracket for March Madness. So that gets me watching it a little bit. And we also have a pretty cool get together for that as well, which is nice. Well, how are you doing in your bracket so far? Uh, I finished last. So I'm finishing last so far. So. <laughs> there, there's that, I guess. You know? <laughs> so we've got uh, Rusty in the chat here with us. Welcome, Rusty. What's happening? Hey, what's going on, man? So how many days do you have left until you're able to put some of uh, the God's nectar to your uh, lips again? Uh, four, three days, four days. I'm, I'm going back to consuming, uh, on the 10th. Yeah. So Patrick, a little back history here. Rusty is going sober for a month for charity. Mm. And, and my uh, health. we've got and health. Yeah. And, and, well, yeah, and obviously his health, but we've got several channels that have pledged money to Rusty and his charity. And, uh, he's been kicking some butt, nice. uh, we're proud yeah. of you, buddy. And counting down the days, of course. <laughs> That's right. How long do you have left? Uh, I go back. I go back to drinking on the tenth. Oh, okay. There you go. Right there. Ready to cross the finish line. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm can ready. See it. You can see the line. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, ready. If if Michael Bartner is still in the chat. I would like to know this old soul single barrel does not taste like an American single malt to me. Old soul is that the blue label we yes. have? One? Oh no, old soul is uh, I think it is a bourbon actually. What just happened? Well, whiskey wisdom just throwing money around apparently. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Matt, you you missed the drawing, buddy. I think that was the point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in chat the whole time. <laughs> well, jump in, Matt. Well, he may be in the bathroom. So if you're still in the bathroom, don't join in. He said he's yeah. got gallbladder issues we tonight. Don't, we, don't so we, don't, we don't need to see the bathroom if you're, <laughs> if you're still in there. But I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, so Old Soul, I know they do the tin type. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, we, we don't. The wrong we, we don't get cool bottles like that out west. These are all like southern and midwest type things. Do you get old soul where you're at, Patrick? No, I haven't heard of it. Uh, you might be able to find it here, but it's not something that's come across my radar, at least anyway. What where, where is it out of? Looks like a bourbon. So, I, I believe it's MGP, but I'm not real sure. Oh, yeah. There he is. Where, where is it? It's a. Where is it? It's a um are you are well, you cat head distillery let's see cat cat head cat head distillery I'm, I'm on their website i'm trying to figure out their information here uh, we've got an official down. matt sighting jackson ms is that mississippi mississippi matt. mississippi rusty congrats buddy you're so close i am so close <laughs> How's it feel? This is bourbon. Old soul you know, single barrel is all it so says. Actually, um, I dang it, I, I I'm actually I'm sleeping sourced. better. Um, that's a that's a thing. Uh, and uh, the wife says I'm not as grumpy, which I don't buy that <laughs> shit. That. Uh, but Michael uh, Bortner, right there. Whatever, Michael Bortner. Bortner. We're, we're talking about your, your whiskey here. Yeah, I'm guessing my so, wife messed up the label on that if she said single malt. But it's a single barrel. Single barrel. Straight bourbon. Okay. Is it sourced or do they make it themselves? Um, It's from Old Soul. So it was a store pick. I can't tell from their website whether they make their own stuff or they... Yeah, I'm not 100%. They distill. Good Lord. Matt's, Matt's drinking some new Riff. Thank you. Yeah, uh, man, that was just, that was brutal. This is new Riff uh, Silver Grove. I've not had this before. Well, so from what I'm learning from Cathead Distillery, for anyone that likes information, they are the first um, legal distillery in the state of Mississippi. 
They were founded in 2010 by friends and blues fans. Apparently, maybe I love they play that some they, music uh, for their whiskey. I, I love that sure they put legal, they like legal distillery because all those moon trainers. I caught that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. They they specifically say legal <laughs> distillery because there's plenty of there must have been plenty of non legal whiskey being made. Um, so I mean, if they've been doing it for that long, I assume years. it's their own stuff. But it doesn't there right. doesn't say on the website. It's... anything else <laughs> it looks just like the videos we saw yesterday perfect matt but they also have like canned cocktails so i'm, I'm kind of interested in that so mike it's it's very very good i i really appreciate this sample thank you so much not a problem hey anyway uh the other night when you guys had uh the live stream you were talking about uh sending a bottle around with uh sort of can sign and doing a little uh auction for charity or whatever did you ever come up with a bottle no that was as much as we talked about it, it was it, while we were it, drinking it's one of those while you're while you're drinking and you come up with a great idea and then the next morning nobody follows up but, but it also but seems like we, logistically not the best idea as well so no a we, lot of wasted money we, in we, shipping we talked about so Rusty's finishing up this month of sobriety for charity, right? And we talked about doing a charity live stream at the end of his his month of sobriety to kind of raise some funds and support that cause. It's it's a horse ranch for veterans. Is that correct, Rusty? Yeah. Uh, so I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll read it over uh, right quick. I have, I, I come prepared this time. Uh, War, Read it over, buddy. Legacy, War Horse Legacy Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in Winslow, Arkansas, serving as a resource for military military veterans. They have a 146 acre ranch, uh, and they offer a variety of activities, which include equine therapy programs, health and wellness programs, fishing, 3D archery, hiking, gardening, networking, and volunteer opportunities. They they take the veterans out and they go, you know, like serve uh like uh 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 like waitress bartend or not bartend but uh you know like serve food and stuff for for charity and all that um uh overall warhorse is an excellent resource for veterans and their families uh commitment to helping military personnel heal and thrive provide a safe welcoming and supporting environment that can help participants heal grow and flourish um as far as their um, wellness stuff, they have a, and I always get this wrong. They have, I think one of the only hyperbaric chambers uh, in Arkansas, which I guess it, it uh, they, you can get it, they get inside it and it's oxygen rich and they put it under pressure and it's supposed to heal, help heal, you know, stuff faster, you know, wounds. Yeah, like traumatic brain injury, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's like the, Sounds like the optimal drinking environment to me, Rusty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an oxygen mask on. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, uh, let's see. They also have a, a biocharger, one of the, the only biocharger unit in the state. It is a subtle energy revitalization device for focus, performance, sleep, and recovery. Um, you know, you can hike, fish, hunt, camp. You can do all that stuff there. Uh, you can get more information. Just go to warhorselegacy.org, and that'll tell you everything. And you can email them at info at warhorselegacy.org if you have any questions. And if you can throw a couple of dollars, two bucks, throw them two bucks, a cup of coffee, and uh, just uh, tell them Rusty sent you. That'll help us out, warhorselegacy.org. Rusty, so just, uh, you got a hundred bucks coming for me in whatever three four days. L let me know how you want to do that. You want me to give it to you to give to them? You want me to give directly to them? Just let just me know what you want to do. Not directly to them, man. That that'll be fine. Yeah. And just say you know for Rusty or yeah, that would be great. They they know me. They they know me. So I'm on I'm on Zoom with Rusty just about every day, and um, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I am proud of all he's accomplishing, all he's done. 
Um, I, I just cannot say enough. He's not the type of person who will take those compliments on his own. He'll give you his um, famous whatever, 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 <laughs> whatever. But let me tell you, in honor of Rusty, I don't have a cool cowboy hat like he he has, or if that's a cowboy hat, but I wore this tonight. Yeah. In honor of him. I was wondering what your hat was, if there was a special reason. I thought you were at a Mexican restaurant or something. I no, it's, it. it's a gardening hat. It's a gardening hat. That's the closest okay. thing I have to a cool hat. But in honor of Rusty, I put it on when I seen him in the chat, and I had to come in and say something. Yeah, uh, Whiskey Nature Delan is a big time gardener. So, yeah, uh, and so cool. Laura, gardening channel, don't you? Like Laura does too, Delan. I I have a uh, Instagram for it. Yeah, that that's it. I don't have a YouTube for it. Just for the um, just for the uh, the only YouTube I have is for the bourbon. Yeah, the, but no, great job, great Rusty. With your bourbon bourbon channel so far, you're growing like crazy. Yeah. So live I, stream. Yeah, the live stream. My first live stream yesterday. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Troy's, got, Troy's got his hat for summertime. That that's bald it, that's and super white skin. He's got to cover it up. That's his big tree peeing hat. <laughs> Sean from um, uh, Mash and Metal or Whiskey Wars. I, I can't really go into what's going on, but his, his father's having some issues. And he messaged me. Uh, probably about 5 30 6 o'clock and said hey are you planning on doing any live streams and i'm like well yeah you know in the future i'm hoping to do some he's like well you want to do it tonight and I, he's like i can't make it so i was like holy crap trial by fire let's do it so yeah and my first live stream went three and a half hours so it was wow. pretty good all right so while the bakers aren't here we can just totally take over the show <laughs> like, oh, all right Yep. Oh, we can't hear him. Can't hear you guys. You guys are on mute or something. Apparently, you're not supposed to click the side button on a mouse because it kicks you out of StreamYard. Yeah, I didn't like... know that. I didn't mean to hit it, and I just she... I touched it, and it was like suddenly everything was gone. You, you guys have no idea how many times during a live stream Laura clicks something. My screen goes blank. I start hearing like music and stuff, and I go into full panic. <laughs> I get us back on. You know, you just gotta like stay calm, make your face, hide it on your face. We're good. We're good. I'll get us back on. <laughs> so Troy and Laura, can I steal like one minute at a time? Go ahead. Uh, you take two. So Patrick, it was really good hearing from you, hearing about your story, learning about your channel. Really appreciate you coming on. It was a really good segment. So thank you for doing that. And then uh Gandy real quick was asking about this uh silver groove. Uh so he was asking what I thought about it. Gandhi, it's it's like a cinnamon with what's that like star? Is it star of anise? Is that how you pronounce that? Star of like anise. Yeah, it's got like this rye like spice on it with um, like a cherry pie long finish. It's, it's really good. I like it. Anyways, but Patrick, I really I really enjoyed hearing hearing everything about your channel and stuff. So appreciate you coming on. It was a good good time. Yeah, yeah, and I Patrick, I, I subscribed to your channel tonight, so I look forward to going through your um, videos and getting to know you and seeing everything that you offer so awesome yeah thanks for doing that guys thanks for the nice words i really appreciate it you know like i said to do in the video whiskey is all about community you know all about enjoying hanging out with people and just you know just not taking life too seriously right yep yeah. and you know it, th this community it's it's amazing when somebody needs something they rally together you know in a heartbeat um always willing to help always willing to send you something there is yes. really no community like this it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I I have gotten so many samples from so many so many people. It's it's, it's like another package of samples. I'm like well, I can't stop them, hun. They're just sending them. I, they ask for my address, they just send them. I'm like, okay. You need to just start adding them around the rim, the brim of your hat, like all the little bottles. Yeah, yeah. Like a little holder. Yeah. Yeah. 
A, a, this week has been busy for us as well. We're like, another one, another one. This has been a good week. Yeah. So we need to get one of those like uh, shotgun ammo lassoes around the chest and instead of shotgun. <laughs> yes. Oh, I yeah. love yeah. it. And, uh, it'll be good to go. So pull it out. Sling. <laughs> so, some of the better streams that we've seen, Patrick, Rusty, his wife, Judy, just sits off camera and she's got a yardstick. <laughs> she Here it is. she calls it the bitch switch yeah. and rusty will get out of line and you just see this yardstick come in and smack him yeah <laughs> she keeps him in line she, she keeps keep, him in she line. keeps him in line if, yeah if there's any reason i want rusty to drink it's because i want the yardstick to come back <laughs> the yardstick has not been around since he stopped drinking and i'm almost <laughs> ready to pay or send his wife a package yeah. just to get the yardstick to hit him. It's been appropriate and I, nothing, yeah, I've been like, terrible, mm. you know, he's polite. It's just it's it's weird. It's weird. I don't understand it. So Rusty, I'm gonna ask you a question. All right. Are you gonna keep going or are you gonna hit hit the Hit the old liquor on April tenth. What are you doing? Oh, no, buddy? I'm. I've got my box of bottles that I'm taking. We're going. We're going camping. And oh first... my god, you're you're okay. Well, look, you need to take at least two two guys with you to make sure they can bring you back. Otherwise, you're going to be lost in the woods after that trip. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm, bring some uh... extra flashlights. Yeah. So, and to kind of answer that question for Rusty, I just sent him ten samples of scotch. And he's got a oh. bottle of RD1 oh, Amberana right. hit in the mail. That, that's rusty. That's perfect. Ten bottles of scotch. That'll keep that campfire going all night. Just just yeah. pour it on that campfire. <laughs> that is perfect, perfect campfire fuel. Yeah. Hey, hey, come Dylan, on, Matt. What are you, it can't what are you be getting that, a bottle of RD1 for these days? Uh, it was about, I think, out the door. It was right around 78. What the heck? Their so, website is a hundred dollars. Yeah. So, 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 so Laura, here's Laura tasted that sample from Gandhi Road and she's like, We gotta get a bottle of this. She just looked on the website, it's a hundred dollars shipped. So I, No, that's 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 pre-tax. That's pre-tax hundred dollars. So, so pre let me shipping. Pre shipping. Let me check because here's how this went down. <laughs> and Rusty was on Zoom with me. Yeah. Rusty wanted a bottle of the Dragon's Milk Origins single or small batch. <clears throat> so I went to the local store that I know and they had one and I was going to pick it up for Rusty and have my guy deliver it. Yes. Well, the guy behind the counter knows me so well. He starts pulling stuff out from underneath the counter, like legitimately. I've, I'm getting ready to buy this bottle and he's pulling stuff out for me. And, um, it was the whole RD1 line and other stuff. And Rusty was like, well, I'd rather have the RD1 Amberana, you know, more than the Dragon's Milk right now. And I was like, well, let me know which one. So, um, yeah, it was, it, it, I love it when plans come together. And I love it. That's like a third store now where they just start pulling stuff out underneath the counter for me and saying, well, do you want to try this? Do you want to try that? So, that's how that went down. But if you're interested, I can definitely make a run tomorrow and see if they have some. Yeah, we're, we're definitely interested. It's not often Laura gives me permission to buy an amber on a finished whiskey. Uh, that's the I like that one the most. The, um, the, the barrel one. The one. barrel one I liked as well, but it wasn't like... I probably, I don't know that I would have told you to get a bottle if we didn't have a bottle. Um, the Nulu well, was good? Yeah, it's okay. But, um, <laughs> like, the folks other ones get old, I just really don't Winston. like. Especially off being up in Washington. The, the Bossa Nova, right? The Bossa Nova, yeah. Do you have yeah, it? I was just lo looking at their website, and it wasn't available for shipping right now. Mm. So, uh, they must have sold it out. But yeah, I, that's what I've been doing all website, all all our whole live stream. I've just been going to different websites, being like, okay, what's available? <laughs> what's available? <laughs> so well, that, that, uh, the Boston Old I have that single barrel was the first true single barrel pick that they've ever done for a store, like outside of wow. like a small batch like Costco and stuff. That was the first one that came to Colorado. It was the first one they've ever did. And I bought one when I had it and I tried it and it was phenomenal. I went back to get a second one. Uh, the owner, uh, this is the store's Avada Wine and Spirits. 
uh, if anybody's in Colorado. And uh, the guy, uh, they didn't have any left. Uh, and then the guy reached out to me because I talked about it on a video. And then he was like, you know, I think I probably have, I have another one around here. So I picked up two. Has that awesome take the bottle label as well. So yeah, if you guys are looking for Amburana, so, definitely have, solo. have the box. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Hold, hold on. We're going to solo you. Show that, show that tater sticker. Oh, yeah. oh Dark, yeah. Cinnamon that, like. toast crunch. I like how they swim them in. I like, that. I like that. <laughs> really good. And, and it's only H Patrick. It's only H five year MGP stuff, and you'd never know. Like there's not nothing useful useful in there at all. Yeah. Patrick, we talked about it backstage before the live stream, but we didn't bring it up during the live stream. Your your new haircut is fantastic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, I got the halo on top of my head as well right now with the light. That's how good it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, but yeah I mean, I, right, right here. There you go, man. Your skin is in, my friend. Skin is in. Skin is in. We got, <laughs> we got some, some plenty of bald people in this community. There you so, go. Yeah. Mike, how warm is it where you are that you're able to just sit outside? Because it's pretty cold here still. Yeah, it's probably in the forties. I just got home from okay, work. Okay, so it's. It's cold there too. Okay, got it. <laughs> He's in a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, it's still cold there. <laughs> Bortner, he's got his whiskey to keep him warm. Uh, that it is... must have a lot of whiskey. <laughs> hey, Rusty, two things. Yes, sir. You're going camping. We expect another Matt sighting video. Right. <laughs> and uh, right. I'll look for him. And what's your first pour going to be? I don't. You know what got me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know this was a thing that uh, Matt and a uh, uh, bourbon hunter <laughs> was mixing. Uh, what was it? Uh, Wo uh, Woodford Double Oak and OGD One Fourteen or something? Yeah, such a great blend. One one uh, to one OGD One Fourteen and Woodford Double Oak. That's kind of intriguing. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe uh, I'll probably just like Jack Daniels Old Number Seven or something. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's worst uh, kind of night. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, I need to. Whatever, I need to, whatever. That's the appropriate. Whatever, you got, whatever. You got boxes of samples, samples lined up. Yeah, I need to take some samples and, uh, and because uh, I, I don't, I don't think I've tried any that that Mike has. I, maybe I've tried one or you, two. You better take know. your card table and set up a blind like at the park entrance. Right. And I'm gonna and do like something. One at City Hall. Right. Yeah. We want one on the on the Kentucky state line. <laughs> right under that's the Alabama. welcome to Kentucky sign. That's too far. Oh, so that's a good idea. Welcome to Alabama He's sign. Get... It's just down the road from me. So there you go. Yeah, we're we're not trying to get him arrested here. He don't care. No, he, he, does, whatever. He, he does a good job of that on his own. I mean, when you've got the balls to sit in front of the city hall and drink the whiskey. <laughs> at noon you're asking for it i have oh. in all of the whiskey tube space i've never seen a video like that that was amazing uh i, I figure i mean what's the worst they're gonna do to me it's gonna be a misdemeanor at most for drinking or drunk in public whatever throw me in jail let me let me film a video <laughs> while i'm in jail you know what i'm saying <laughs> you'll be doing, uh, you, you, you'll be doing another you month get in so tight bad. with the courthouse <laughs> and you can film a, a blind from in the jail cell there you go <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want to do. I, I definitely would be in jail. So that would be amazing. That would be epic. Toilet that whiskey. Would be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, you just gave me a really good idea, Troy. Okay. I like that. <laughs> this is good. I'm yeah, actually so really good Patrick, friends with uh, uh, Rusty did a video mm -hmm. where he set up a table in front of City Hall <laughs> at noon and he did a blind sitting there like the bells are ringing that it's noon and, like, and then uh but he's in a small town so there was like literally no one walking around or yeah it was no sunday at noon everybody and was... then he did another one on an overpass over a highway the georgia alabama state line right? yeah it's something like that he was just sitting there on the on the freeway basically doing a point <laughs> 
look, I, 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 I got to work on, you know, I, I got location and I got the good looks. I can't do really do anything else. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I got to work with what I got. I, my, my palate's terrible and uh, my nose don't work. So that's all I got. What do we got here? Oh. There we go. There's his city go. hall oh. video. That was a great, just right in front of city hall. I love it. Yeah, I just do the video in chat. If anybody wants to see it, I just drop the link in chat. Not there even like over to the glasses, just like Glenn Caron's. Everybody can see his yeah. whiskey. Like yeah, no yeah. One. he he did the whole thing. It was great. I love it. I was kind of hoping the cops would show up, and then I, I was just going to take off running, you know, and you didn't see the cops running behind me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't Try show some up. Jailbird hooch. <laughs> no hooch. No, no jailbird hooch. I don't think that would taste as good. <laughs> I think our dog just scared himself. He just came running in here. <laughs> uh, there's something scary in the hallway. Dark, darkness, and quiet. <laughs> Well, I think at this time, folks, I'm going to uh, bid you all a, a good evening and farewell. I think uh, the allotted time that I had to do this has uh, expired, and uh, I hear some children oh, getting ready for bed upstairs, so I'll probably need to uh, do other commitments outside of this. Well, I appreciate you all for having me. Hopefully, everybody had a good time. Hopefully, I was able to answer some questions, and really great questions tonight as well from you folks as well. Thought-provoking and made me think, and sometimes put me on the spot. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was our pleasure. Uh, take one last second, plug your channel, Patrick. Yeah. You know, if you uh, want to watch questionable reviews from uh, a Welshman about American whiskey, then go over to YouTube, hit up the whiskey code because I'm your guy and uh, appreciate everybody spending time here tonight. Thank you so much. It was Cheers, great Patrick. meeting Thank you. you. We appreciate it, buddy. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. And anytime you guys do in any want to do a collaboration, you know, you know, we're more welcome to drop me an email. Definitely enjoy tonight. Thank you. We we will Sounds for great. sure do Thank that. You. Take care. You're welcome. Cheers. Guys. Cheers. There we go. How how cool was Patrick? That was yeah. a lot of fun. Just full of information, man. Just all kinds of. <clears throat> Find a Ferris wheel in Alabama and do a review, right? I hopefully like <laughs> while you're spinning on the review, just like one one glass. Just like drink it while you go all the way around the Ferris wheel. Are you ready yeah. for something new? Well, I haven't had I think I think what we should do is send Rusty. But we can save it. No, I drink that one. That's good. Well, if you want yeah. to pop something, I don't I don't want I just want one more. All right. So I'm gonna pop open this this rebel small that. batch reserve. Try. I still got whiskey. I got I got so much drinks. Well, Laura's over here. like ten drinks behind. Troy drinks more than me. I can't Matt, I can't keep up. Send Rusty yeah. what? I was saying to Troy, I think we should include Rusty in one of the next rounds of the trash palette challenge. Yeah. But with a with a twist, every 30 seconds he gets hit with a stick while he's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a bell rings and he gets hit kind of thing i like it yeah every 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 one dollar donation he gets he gets a little whack yeah the the angel doesn't get its wings rusty gets smacked yeah. <laughs> so rusty sent me some samples and at some point we're planning on drinking through the samples together on a on a stream or a video yeah. uh, maybe a live stream but before then once i know a date i'm gonna put a ticker on on um youtube that has an over and under do we see the top of rusty's head or does he make it through <laughs> the live no i'm i'm not i'm not getting that far anymore i'm i'm committed to drinking responsibly and not passing out on any streams anymore awesome hey, barrel dave is here hey barrel dave wait uh laura can you or troy can you um I don't know what you call it in StreamYard. What did uh what did Dave say about that blend? What was it? It was like hold on a third, a third, a third. Hold hold on, I'm heading back up there. One of my favorite blends is 34% benchmark foolproof, 33% eagle rare, 33% John Bowman single barrel. 
Is all right. that 101 right proof? I'm going to go get all of those. I'll be right back. No, that's 100. Uh, yeah. Dave. 100 proof. Oh. So I need, I, I actually have, I actually have full proof right here. So Let me go get e Eagle Rare and Bone. I, I, right I want to know, I want to know how you're going to measure 34% benchmark full proof. I was thinking that. How, how do you, I mean, seriously, does he have it's a very a, specific, a, Dave? He Tell me your eyeball the numbers to come out right because if he had just did 33, 33, 33, somebody would have said, Oh, that's only you know 99 percent. You know, nobody questions Dave until he puts something like this in there. If he just says equal parts, these three whiskeys, right? So here's what I think he does he does 33, 33, 33, and then just a to make it 34 that's 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 it that's all he i don't think he can do it any other way yeah i mean so yeah, that, I'm see, a little dave, bit... dave agreed with me exactly rusty because somebody would have yeah. said well it's only 99 percent I, I i gotta be honest guys i'm a little distracted hearing about 30 minutes i'm gonna be doing 22 push-ups because that's what uh, that's what we do on the veteran live stream over at uh, Northwest right. Bourbon. Yeah, you guys did that last year, didn't you? We we do it every month. Twenty twenty two veterans a day take their own lives, and so we're doing twenty two push ups to honor that. That's awesome. <clears throat> it's not awesome that I, that happens, but it's I, awesome. I would that love it. I would love it if I didn't have to do push-ups, Delan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much easier when I was younger. Right? I, I'm just saying, for our entertainment, I can't wait to see you do the push-ups. So, last month we had Sean from Echoes doing the 22 push-ups as well. Okay. He he promised he was going to come back and do them again this month, but I've not seen him on our on our stream tonight, so hopefully he shows up on Mark's stream. And Mark, I see you in the chat, buddy. We're going to be heading your way here in about 35 minutes. Jen, you can do 22 sit-ups for sure. Timber Cruz, 22 push-ups. We're, we're honoring those veterans. And Mark puts on just an amazing show. It's it's all veteran focused for this particular stream. I I encourage everybody who's watching us, all 37 of you who are still here in in about a half hour, I encourage you to jump over to Mark's stream. We're going to support him. Yep. Throw him a sub. He's a great I'm guy. He's there. got a great yeah, channel. Yeah. Wait a second. And, 34%. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> he just You're means late to the game, part. buddy. We yeah, had that discussion parts. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, well, I did I did 33 33 33. So here here's the Vogel saying. Here we go. Where's your last 1% at? All right, fine. No. I'll, 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 I'll throw a, li a little drop of foolproof. Hold on. Like a drop. Just Don't like do too drop. much. Don't do too much. Hang on, here we go. Just a tiny drop. That's too right, much. You ruined it. <laughs> now it's 101%. <laughs> All right, here's the Vogel saying. I am so excited for this. Mr. Now, Lopez, Dave, it's going to be good, my friend. Peanut butter scrambled egg sandwich. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you. Dave, have you had the 114 OGD and uh, Double Oak 50-50? Where can I find – how do you guys see the chat? How do I bring up the chat? It's in the top right corner. It says comments. Yeah, it's right next. It says. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I just I, I had the video full screen. Okay, I see it. I'm I curious. Always, I always just pop out the chat from the YouTube and put oh, it up. Oh, that's brilliant, it Rusty. Brilliant. Yeah, let me do that. Hold on. Oh, that's so much better, and I don't have to have this huge sun on me. There we go. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so Mike Brock is talking about this Rebel. It, 
it's so freaking good guys if you see this let me let me solo myself if i can figure it out laura's the tech wizard i'm the simp damn here we go all right you you see this model right here yeah yeah small rebel small batch reserve it's not expensive it's fantastic i don't know how to undo this guys let me see if i can do it oh it's become the troy show oh i just Excellent noticed blue. Blue. there we go i did it Woo! I I had, uh, troy. Blue, blue leds behind those uh staves i didn't i never noticed that yeah you like that i do like that how, where the hell are they plugged in uh they're down here down huh. down right. down here yeah. All right, Mr. Vogel saying this is for you, buddy. Cheers. Here we go. It, oh my God. <laughs> Troy, you got to go do this right now. I don't have oh benchmark, buddy. Uh, you don't have benchmark foolproof? The only benchmark in our area is benchmark eight, and I'm not mixing that with anything. Wait, have you never had foolproof? We've got a sample of foolproof, but no, we don't. We've never even opened it. Oh shit! Oh, wow. Oh, what? Dave, this is this is. You know what's interesting is it totally takes the heat off of the benchmark foolproof. This is way smoother than Your I thought it would be. Dog tail. Oh, Laura's in the eating mode. She's dialing it down. All right, I guess she we need some to popcorn water. here. Got the popcorn. <laughs> Dave, I enjoy this. I enjoy the Vogel sign. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So, so back to this Rebel, guys. So, Lux Row used to source their whiskey from Heaven Hill, right? So, all of the Rebel 10 year was the same juice as the Old Fitz. It was basically Old Fitz, right? So, uh -huh. they've taken. They they got they got bought by MGP. They've taken all that, all of that remaining stock. They've blended it together, and they put it out in this Rebel Small Batch Reserve. So this is this is the cheapest old fits you're ever gonna get. Nice. The newest, the next there. Rebel Ten Year is gonna come out. It's gonna be MGP. People are probably gonna hate it. We'll find out. Maybe we'll do Stay, a review on that's awesome, Timber Cruise. Anyway, that's awesome. I, I can catch Northwest. Oh, gotcha. So, if Mike? you guys you uh, want a bottle to uh, autograph, I will donate the old baker. Look at that, old school bakers. Yes, found it last that's summer. Super cool. Been sitting in uh, my selection since last summer. So, if you uh. Need a bottle? I'll have, be more than happy to donate it. So believe it or not, we have a store here locally. They had like six of those bottles on the shelf when Laura and I first started collecting whiskey. It was right after they changed to the new uh, Baker's design, and we thought the new design was cooler, so we bought that and left all six of those sitting on the shelf, and now they're gone. <laughs> Whoops, we didn't know. That's what happens. Yeah, I was out one day and I think there was like two or three on a small shop. And I'll, I'll take it. it was $53 and he wanted like $200 for a size of rack. You know, just a regular baby size. Wow. Oh, that's insane. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what about... Yes, it's better than larceny. What about, um, how would you do this? Like, uh, like you get a sticker, get a, get a plain, you can get, you know, plain white stickers or whatever from Walmart and, and people putting their signature on that. And then the sticker being put on the, on the bottle. Now, so you can sign the bottle with like a colored, like a, uh, metallic Sharpie. Yeah, but right. but Rusty's option is way cheaper because you're not shipping. Right, you're not shipping the bottle. A Everybody's heavy having to spend bottle. fifteen dollars or twenty dollars to send it for person. Of, yeah, yeah. I, I like I, your idea, Rusty. Yeah, I, I I I get what you're saying, Rusty. I don't think it would look as cool. 
No, it wouldn't look. I mean, as it would last though. You wouldn't wipe it off or something. So I, I kind of like it. I feel like you sign your name with the metallic sharpie, and then you put like a clear coat fingernail polish over it so it don't wipe off. Maybe you can buy yeah. clear stickers. You use some pirate ship and you send it off to the next person for like seven dollars. What about clear stickers? And then when we get it all filled up, we <laughs> we auction it off. <laughs> I, I, hear, I hear her saying clear stickers. I'm not ignoring her. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just eat my popcorn. I, I hear I, I hear you. I acknowledge you. You're not a bride. Beautiful bride. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Troy, she, she heard you when you said the drawing would be in 15 minutes, but then she acknowledged you 25 minutes later when it actually happened. So, so in my defense, Patrick is, oh, that light just about tipped over the dog. Our dog is rambunctious. Pat, See, Patrick is full you of knowledge. I, I absolutely love Patrick being on here. He kind of took over the stream. He like was knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. That guy is high, high ass energy. If you're not if you're not subscribed to Patrick D from Whiskey Co., you probably should be. He sat still longer for our stream than ever in his life. It killed him. He had to when we went to the the group of people, he he adjusted his mic so he could stand up, or his camera so he could he, stand he up. He like paces back and forth and side to side. Watch his videos. He is not holding still for anything. <laughs> Selective hearing, Frank the Tuna Man says. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for letting me come on, and thank you to everybody. I actually gained seven subscribers tonight, so that's awesome. I want to thank awesome, all of them. Man. Um, but I was up until 1.30 last night, so I think I need to make this a short night. You had, and um, You had a pretty successful live stream last night. I was checking you out. I was live behind the scenes on Doc Martinez's live stream, but mm -hmm. I was checking you out while I was on Doc's stream. So I've got to be honest, the first 15 or 20 minutes were kind of rough. <laughs> they were, they were kind of... So the rest of it was good. Yeah. So once you get past that... Everything else was, was pretty good, but I yeah, when I went rusty, to Rusty, yeah, at Slapshot, you had uh, John Kranz, Kranz, um, and um, uh, Mr. Great Shot, Mr. Great Shot was on there. Yeah, you had some, you had some personalities on with you. Oh yeah, they made it easy. They were all awesome. I mean, Rusty left, but you know, we didn't notice that much. He he has a tendency to do that. <laughs> He's just chilling with the cat right now. Whiskey Nature, I just subscribed to you, buddy. Awesome. Thank you, sir. I've been subscribed to you. I was going to tell you this. Um, I'd seen your last video, and then all of a sudden you disappeared. I thought I made you mad or something because it was like you were there, and then poof, you were so gone. it was all your fault, Delan? I think it is, and I don't I know saw, how. I saw you subscribe to me, and I just shut it all down. I was like, I can't have this. I can't have Whiskey Nature <laughs> subscribe to me. I, I, uh, I don't blame you. So, all right. Well, thank you guys. Have a good night. Good luck with your push-ups, and I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow about that. All right. Perfect. Have a great night. All right. I think I might bye bye. To do your twenty-two push-ups tonight. Laura's doing twenty-two push-ups tonight, guys. Not on camera because you gotta like adjust. So, the... oh, so here in like the real ones. Here, so here in twenty minutes, we're gonna jump over to Mark from Northwest Bourbon's live stream. It's his his monthly veteran live stream, and we do twenty two push ups to honor the twenty two veteran suicides a day. Right. We got Sean from Echoes to do it last month. I've done it for like two or three months in a row. Laura's doing it tonight with us. Nice. Yeah. With or without popcorn. You, you still. Well, I might gorgeous. be done by the done with the popcorn by then we still got about 20 minutes so I'm, i can I'm i can shovel this in by then rusty you doing okay, you like... i'm too fat i i might i might can get three off if i'm lucky oh look at that dog that's a happy dog mike yep he's uh he's definitely oh kisses yeah king charles cavalier they're, they're definitely lap dogs yeah, 
Can you hear the pounding from our dog? He's uh, wagging his, his tail against his tail. The, the closet door over the here. The world's most destructive tail wag. He knocks things off the counter, like uh, coffee tables. They like anything on a coffee table. He wags his tail and it goes flying. It bruises on my legs. I mean, this this dog has an aggressive tail. Oh, look at that! He fits under the table. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna dip out so I can try my phone, and I'll catch you in the next live stream. All right, Mike. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for joining, hey, buddy. As in Northwest. Yep. Yes. All right. See you guys. See you, Mike. Bye, buddy. Matt, did you have something like blinding in your face there? You were suddenly glowing. Oh, I, I did. Yeah, yeah, but it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a spreadsheet, but it's like way too boring to talk about. Mm. So, Is Troy, thank you, stream? thank you for doing all of the uh, the sightings yesterday. That was really funny. <laughs> were you, by the, were you doing those like on the spot? I, I was actually yes. That's crazy. No, nope. he was he was sitting in the back background of that video all night long. Ask, ask Laura how much time I had from when I got home from work to when that started. About ten I, minutes. Well, I imagine immediately because I was laughing so hard because he soloed you. I think I texted you at one point and you were sitting there like wiping your mouth from chicken wings or something. No, it was pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard. And I was you saw yourself down some pizza. Like, that was really funny. What's your go-to pizza, your Troy? Uh, I like the uh, pepperoni pineapple. What about you, Rusty? I, 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 I'm more of an everything and extra cheese kind of guy. I like the whole everything. So. It, if if it's if it's cuttable and edible, you put it on a pizza. Yeah, she pretty gone. much. She gone. We had SoCal for just a second. Just a second. She she made a glimpse there. I don't know if you saw her. <laughs> that, that that was her contribution to the show. <laughs> I like uh, pepperoni jalapeno. That's my favorite pizza. Oh, oh that's a good one. Complexopedia too. finally shows up. I I messaged him earlier. He's like live at six p.m. Right. Was it eight forty? He shows up. That's <laughs> like almost midnight here, <laughs> right? So Matt, we we watched your your latest like teaser trailer earlier. <laughs> my my dramatic trailer, I think you said. I, I'm telling oh, you, the music. I'm dun, telling dun, you what dun, that, dun. that got me pumped up. I'm excited. Yeah, really? Oh yeah, we had it. I've been full volume. Full volume. <laughs> Full volume. <laughs> yeah, I've got to do some tests with Dave coming up. Um, I've got all kinds of cool stuff. And I still have a surprise. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. You guys may have figured it out by now. But there is an extra little surprise coming if you guys uh, check out the show. So it'll be fun. I'm really excited to start doing this again. I'm, I wish it was next Friday now. Now i got to wait two weeks for it. So you, it's been like... It was after the Halloween live stream when you got like burnt from YouTube, correct? Yep. It was the Halloween stream that totally screwed me. And what's worse is, and I don't think I ever talked about this. Um, on the Patreon, I talked about like what there a. You go. <laughs> uh, it's my dart girl. What's up, dart champion of the world? <laughs> you still playing darts? She's on mute. Look at this. What a clown on mutes. Yeah, peace. I'm on mute. I'm a peace chick. Why don't you piece your mute button? She hey, there the it is. You just right forgot there. it. There it is. <laughs> She's like, how do I hit the mute button? What am I doing? Somebody told me to send them money in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you. I, I you don't can't know. hear you. You, Jen, you literally live your life on Zoom. You don't know how to unmute. Okay, shut up. I was what I was saying is like everything was coming at me twice because I still had YouTube up, and I'm like, oh. oh my god, it's just too much. Okay, so uh, Baker drinks. What I mean by sit-ups is that guy right there. So I have to do sit. It's oh. like leg lifts, sit-ups. I'll do 22 okay. of them. It'll probably kill me. There you go. But I can do it. I, I love it. The I want my I want my hat. Me. 
I want my hat and I want my long hair. I want to look like Rusty. So I just got the glasses because, well, that's all I can do. You, you look super cool, by the way. Super cool. Rock on. Yeah, I want to get some. I want to get some shades on here. These lights are bright. Are bright. People don't appreciate that. I'm sure they see it because it's all I can see. It's all in, it's all in, in my, my in my lenses. So, I mean, I haven't got to see SoCal much. So, like, she's been she's got her new job and stuff, and she's gone most of the time. Where I was seeing her every day. You know, we we'd hang out on Zoom every day. There's a whole group of us. Jen, can, can, I rec can I recommend an occupation that I think you'd really excel at? Uh, a paralegal. Can I be a paralegal? This is sort of an illegal space. I think you'd be a really good bounty sort hunter. Of an illegal space. Oh, bounty dude, hunter. so are, good. Are you talking like Beth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like like a like a bounty hunter. Like she should get a little badge that she hangs yeah. around her neck and get like a crocodile Dundee knife, a couple guns, and like the Chewbacca thing across her chest. She would yeah. be. I would be terrified. Sure. Truck as well. You gotta have a huge uh, truck. I, I, I believe the for correct sure. term for that is bandolier, Matt. Bandolier. <laughs> Bandolier, right. okay. A bandolier. Come on. I would be if I saw her getting out of a car like that, I would just say, All right, you got me. I'm, I'm done. Just come and well, get me. You Take know, I stuff. do help the uh a homeless and I have to go to encampments and stuff. So, you know, that's how I kind of come out. I come out with my G.I. Jane shit and just say, you know, let's go. So anyway, uh, you need me legal services, let's go. You help you help the homeless? I didn't know you were helping Rusty. That's really nice of you. That's, that's uh, really I thought I was helping you, bro. It was homeless and disabled. You forgot the second part of it. Homeless and yeah, disabled. Disabled in there. Damn. Right, Damn. right. So maybe you and Rusty, you know, whatever. I'm yeah, living right. at the local Waffle House right now. So, you know. Hey, hey Damn, she is like, she is did, quick did on that rubber your, band insult. Yeah. Did you get your trash ballot sticker yet? Me? Yeah. No, yeah. I did not. But okay. Rusty did ask me uh, for my address. And I'm like, Rusty, you know my address. And he's like, oh, Bakers wants to send you something. I'm like, they want to send me something. They're going to send me a sticker. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited, but I haven't received it yet. No. Yeah, you should well, get it any day. Yeah. No, 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 no not a day. Because what you don't know is Washington State is still one of the few post offices still using ponies. So it will get there. I, I, think, I think you might be right. They're very yeah. slow. So, They're very slow. so yeah. Matt's very impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, in my defense, it was so long. Troy was about to send a second one because we were convinced it was gone. That took forever. So we we have fun tracking shipments that come to us because sometimes they stop an hour south of us and then they travel an hour north of us. It's like you passed us. You passed us on the way. Like you could have just dropped it off, but instead you went the other direction. What's going on here? Right. So I'm, I'm not really sure how they decide how they do their shipments here. Yeah. What is happening? It's kind of like a flight. You know, you're taking a flight from, let's say, New York, and then you go like left field for some reason. Um, to come to, let's say, California or or out west somewhere, but you you still go left field, and everybody's like, "What is happening? Why would you go there? Let's say you come up here to go down to Texas to come over here. No, no, it makes no sense to go to Washington. <laughs> let's say let's yeah. let's say that makes no sense. Nah, for sure, it's weird. Yeah, I, was... I mean, it's it's run by the government, right? So it's there's that. Not exactly efficient. You know, that, that thing that off track is so fond of the government. That's We're right. Shut it down I, with whatever mm. you're talking about, Troy. Yeah. And anything <laughs> the government touches turns to shit. And, and it, it's everything. We got four gates, something. Is oh. that the, this is the most, one of the most beautiful pours I've ever had. You're tell me where I'm at solo. Am I, am I above the yes. solo? Is that solo? Uh, is that right solo? there. Click. Boom. Four gate. Age 10 years, foundation. 100 and something proof. 110.4 proof. God, what a beautiful bottle. Had to switch I, glasses there. Had to switch glasses. Sorry. I, 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 have, not, I have not found a four-gate bottle that I hate oh, yet. Oh, shit. That Kelvin, Wait, dude, did you get Kelvin the Kelvin 60? 
Huh? Did you get the Kelvin 60? No, I I haven't I actually haven't as much as I'm just sitting here talking up four gate, I actually haven't bought a four gate in a while. I've got that single barrel that I was telling you about. I've got the split stave, which is one of my all-time favorite bottles. Um, and then this is uh this split 10 year foundation. Stave bourbon or split stave rye? The bourbon. We've got the split stave rye, and it's fantastic. Have you had the bourbon? We've not had a split stave bourbon. Oh, okay. I, did I not send that to you? Are you sure? Have you checked what I sent uh, you? You did not, no. no okay. All right. We well, hang on. Let me, let me make a we, note because I need we got to a, We got a single barrel and a Kelvin 60 from Dave. Yeah. I don't that's think... That's 60. Oh, my goodness. That Kelvin 60 is so good. It's actually like aged four roses. It's so good. Wow. All right, I'm going to send... I think send, it's impossible to find an extra expensive, is my guess. I told um, Dave I was going to send him some of the split states. <laughs> I'll you guys one, too. I, I would love to hear what you guys think of it. It's one of my favorite all-time bottles. It's I'd like uh, what, one of the I few bottles. Huh? I'd love to tell you what I think of it. It's one of the few bottles that I get like a toasted marshmallow on. I love that bottle. It's so good. Okay. That sounds good. So, so you guys, I know that you guys love, did you guys ever taste the, the quad malt Frey Ranch that I sent you? Uh, so we, is that the uh, 375 that you have? Yes. We did taste that. It was pure butterscotch. Oh, was that the So really you liked one? it. Oh, fuck, dude. It was phenomenal. Okay. All our right. our own Frey Ranch is gar hot garbage. Well, the other yeah. one sent us was also garbage. Wait, what else did he send us? Oh, hang on. Yeah, I've sent you two Frey Ranches. You may be mixed. I sent you a quad malt, and I sent you a single barrel. The, so a whatever, single barrel was whatever really the 375 is. That's the quad malt. That was phenomenal. Okay. I think you have it backwards. No, no, no. The 375, you paid a lot for like a tiny bottle, right? Yes. That's Yes. That was phenomenal. Butterscotch. Okay. Oh, gosh. There's her St. Patrick's hat. I need you to wear that while you're doing your sit-ups, Jen. This is the, the closest I could get to Rusty because Bob has a hat very close to Rusty's. And I'm like, Bob, get your hat. I'm going to put my hair down, put my sunglasses on. I want to be a Rusty girl version, right? But this is the closest <laughs> I could get. I want to be a Rusty girl. Sorry. Rusty, Do we I all like want to be rusty that. girls? I want to be a rusty girl. Damn. I like it's that. Kinda, I mean, you put a hat on for Rusty. I did. It's, it's, it's kind of like the Robert Palmer that. girls that sit there and go. Mm -mm, it sounds mm. like a, a lyric in a you're Van Halen. Simply Hallen. irresistible. Oh, Is that what you're talking about? Girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, anyway. good. Holy shit. Yeah. That is so good. Wait. Oh. It was delicious. Oh, I love popcorn, Laura. I love popcorn. Oh, yum. What do so you want to eat it? Troy won't eat it. So if I make any, it's just for me. I, it's not that I don't like the flavor. I don't like that shit in my teeth. Yeah. I hear I, you I, on that. I, I totally popcorn. hear you on that. <laughs> yeah. It's I have my wife loves popcorn and I have this on my desk to, uh, whenever I eat popcorn because you just you can't eat popcorn without the Wait, floss. wait, wait. Right? Hold that up again. It Hold floss. it up again. It floss. It's a little floss. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I do that too. But, you know, it's still so good. It's the taste. It's the smell. As long as it's not burnt. If it's burnt, you're hosed. Bad dog. Lay down. I, uh, I don't have that problem anymore, so I eat all the popcorn I want. Oh, look, I got no teeth. Years, he comes it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just what are you drinking, Jen? No, I can chew. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm <laughs> I'm drinking what I I yeah. like to call like a taste of a holiday. So it's a little splash of Fireball, some vodka, apple pressed apple juice, and a splash of cranberry. So it's um. And, and, oh wait, wait, wait! And I top it with a little bit of cinnamon. So that is the most it's, girl drink I've ever heard. It can you hold amazing. it? Oh, it's and in a red cup. I was going to say, hold it up. Mm -hmm. I want to see what color it is. Uh, it's, oh shit! It's oh, icy. Somebody's oh, <laughs> got to clip that. Please, somebody clip that. That's amazing. You know what? A little bit I'm of drinking. a spill there. A little I'm bit drinking. of a spill. 
Oh, you opened my fidget thing. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Mike Brock, I'm a McKenna 10 fan. I love so McKenna Dave 10. So Dave Vogelsang says, I have a crappy Frey Ranch single barrel bourbon store pick, but a fantastic <laughs> Frey Ranch single barrel rye pick. So that's the thing. I just, I don't know that I can buy any more Frey Ranch anything until I, like I know I what can't. it tastes like before I yeah. buy it. Because some are really good and some are really gross. There's no I, like, this one's okay. It's either really good or really gross. Yeah. Frey, Frey Ranch is like Russian women. It's either a one or an 11. It, it, there's no in between. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no in between. I say 11. 11 yeah. or 111 yeah. <laughs> or 111 yeah. <laughs> Mike Brock, i am a fan of henry mckenna i think i haven't had a bad one but i've heard that they're also the same way sometimes they're really good sometimes they're really bad we've only had ones that are pretty dang good so i'm a fan all right i guess i'm going with just eagle rare now Eagle Rare, solid choice. That's what I had last night um, while Troy was doing that live stream stuff. I popped on for like a minute and, you know, I, I, see had, I had been out. I, just, uh, I haven't um, picked any up yet. Maybe I was out uh, doing, um, oh gosh, what was I doing? Zip lining. That's the word I'm looking for. I went zip lining cool. yesterday. Um, and so then we got home and, and then Troy got home from work about the same time and he's hopping on this live stream and I had just gotten home zip lining and I was like, yeah, I'm not sitting on a live stream. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I want to ask real quick, Matt, um, sorry to interrupt, but I want to ask real quick, how was the 34, 33, 33? How was the blend? I, I must've missed it. It was really good. I, I it so what I yeah. what so the, the benchmark foolproof this bottle it's a great cheap bottle, but the my only problem with it is it's very 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 hot and so what that blend does is it takes it to a very reasonable level to to drink and enjoy, it just levels everything out. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I still don't know if it beats the fifty fifty one fourteen and double oak, but it was it was I will do this again. It was very very good. It was very good. So I want to take and try. So I found a place that sells Ambarana chips. Oh God, you and Troy, jeez. And I want to, I want to take some Ambarana chips and put it either in a full, in a foolproof, you know, for a week to see what it does and take it out and try it. And I, I love the RD one Ambarana. It was freaking amazing. That Okay, I'll give you that. That RD1 that I just sampled, that thing was so good. Uh, if every other Amberana finish that I had tried tasted like that, I'd be an Amberana person. But apparently I'm just really picky when it comes to Amberana. My ear's not working. I'm going to put it in here for a second. I just realized my entire beard is fucking gray except these two things here. How do I no, do this? Got, there is got, like, nothing stripes. wrong with You're that. Striped. There's nothing wrong with that, Matt, by the way. Nothing. Oh, it's so weird to try to do this on a camera. There we go. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I kind of like it. I think that um, some men and some women just age beautifully. Like, they may not even have been hot in their day, but they age beautifully. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Drying I coupons that when I showed you my drink, coupons got wet. Coupons. Oh, no. That's okay. Well, so jokes on you, Jen. Streamyard has a touch up my appearance thing, and I have it maxed out right now, and it is working overtime. So <laughs> shut up, Matt. But, Jesus. Hang on. Before before we move <laughs> over to Mark's stream, I just want to say real quick, Rusty. I love you, brother. I'm so proud of you for how far you've come. I Me can't too. How hard yeah. it's been. Um, I'm looking forward to donating to uh, War Horse. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of you, Rusty. Uh, that so means a lot to me, Matt. That means absolutely. a lot to me, my friend. Jen, sure. Cheers to you, I'm Rusty, really with, with my water Yeah, cheers here. to you, Rusty. Right, I right. know. Cheers. cheers to your Kool-Aid drink, Rusty. And, Jen, I'm yeah. glad to see you again. Thanks for dipping your, your Christmas drink on the floor, even though it's April. And uh, and Laura and Troy, I really enjoyed – you guys had a great stream tonight. This was amazing. I really enjoyed um, – mm -hmm. Your guest tonight. It was a really good time. So, anyways, I just wanted to say that before we hop over to Mark's stream. 
Yeah. Thank you. Wait, wait. wait. I do want to ask if your guest was because at, when I first got on there, I didn't know his name. A lot of times, like I was telling Bob, Whiskey Wisdom, I know is Matt. You know, there's people we know who their names are, right? So anyway, Patrick, but he sounded, I said, at first I was like Australian. I'm like, no, no, there's some Irish, Scottish, maybe there's some Welsh. I don't know. What, where is he actually from? What is his accent? Because it's like a bunch of different stuff. His accent so to he, me is a bunch of different stuff. He was Welsh. Okay, so he is Welsh. Okay. Then, but now he lives in Colorado. So he's currently in the U.S. So that might, you know, take away some of his... He's been here about 12 years, he said. It could, it could take away some of his accent. But he also said something about living in the U.K. So I kind of feel like he... Because his accent wasn't, like, exact... I'm like, I feel like he picked up many different accents and just had a cool accent, but we were trying to figure it out. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. It was a game we were having on our own over here. <laughs> yep. Very fun. But now we got to get over to uh, okay. Mark's live stream. So thank you guys for being here. Everybody, we appreciate it. Northwest Bourbon Veterans live stream. I encourage we all 22 of you who are watching to head over there. Wait, do we have to do video on, do we have to do video of us doing the exercise? You don't have no, to. No, 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 no. We just, he just does it. So if you want to do okay. it, you can do it cool. and say you joined. Got you. Join Love Laura. you guys. Love you, Bakers. Love you, Jen. Cheers, everybody. Have a good night. Gandy Road, I'm going to reach out to you, buddy. Gandy. Love you. Jen, love you. Good night. We're heading over to Mark. Cheers, everyone.